Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto is returns to fairy tale before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. And check out the description as well. Let's start the video. Chapter 1 The King Returns Man, I think we should try and look for another job. Aye, we're running out of food money. Well if we've taken that reward money from our last job we'd be sitting pretty. We come to the guild fairy tale where everyone was laughing and having a good time, we come to a table that had three people that were talking. The first was a 17-year-old boy that was lean and muscular, with slightly tanned skin having spiky pink hair sticking out in every which way with black eyes, wearing a gold-trimmed black sleeveless waistcoat that was left open showing his muscular chest, a gold-trimmed black cloth around his waist that reached his knees held by a leather-brown belt with an oval-shaped silver buckle, white knee-length trousers with black ribbons tied, a thick black wristband on his left wrist, black open-toed sandals and a white scale patterned scarf wrapped around his neck, laying his head down on the table. He had the fairy tale symbol in red on his right shoulder. The second one was a male blue cat with black eyes, the inside of his ears pink with white fur on his cheeks, where his two whiskers were, stomach and the tip of his tail, and wearing a green bag tied around his neck munching on a fish. He had the fairy tale symbol in green on his back. The third was a 17-old girl that has a great figure and pale skin having blonde hair that reached her shoulders, but had a ponytail on the right side and blue ribbons with brown eyes, wearing a blue trimmed white sleeveless blouse that had a blue strip across her chest that held her e-cup breasts, a blue layered skirt that had a brown belt with gold and silver keys on the right side, with a leather-handled long black whip with a heart-shaped end on the left side, a thick black wristband on her right wrist, and black heeled boots standing beside them. She had the fairy tale symbol in pink on the back of her right hand. These people were Natsu Dragneel, Happy, and Lucy. We've been over this Lucy, it would have tarnished Fairy Tail's name. Happy said. Happy's right. You can't always think about yourself. Natsu said looking at her. Whatever. Lucy sighed. Anyway I can't forget rents due. Might as well get to it. She said turning around and heading to the request board to find a mission. Let's see, finding a magic bracelet, breaking a spell on a cursed cane, hunting a volcano demon. Man sure are a lot of jobs to choose from. Well let me know you find one you're taking on. Lucy turned her head to see a 19-year-old girl that also had a great figure in peach skin, having white hair with curls that reached her back, also with two bangs framing her face, and reached to her e-cup breasts and a short ponytail covering her forehead with blue eyes, wearing a sleeveless ankle-length maroon dress with a pleated skirt the front, at a pink bow and similar colored trimmings framed the neckline acting as straps and circle around her waist, maroon high-heeled shoes, a small chain necklace with a blue oval gem around her neck, and a bracelet made of white flowers, circling her right wrist coming towards her. She has the fairy tale symbol in white on her left thigh, but you can't see it cause it was under her dress. The master's away for a conference and I'm covering for him. This was Marahin Strauss, fairy tale's top model. What kind of conference? Lucy asked. One for guild masters. They get together too from other town to explain the state of their guilds and things that are going on. Marahin explained making Lucy confused. It's different from the magic council, but well it can be a bit difficult to understand. She tapped a finger on her chin thinking of a way to better explain things to her. She suddenly snapped her fingers and turned to someone behind her. Can someone hand me a light pen? Sure. The person said handing her a pen that had a glowing end at the tip. Thanks. Marahin thanked before she drew a diagram in the air before pointing to the top. The ten council members who have connection to the government hold the highest positions in the magical world. They exist to protect the order world. The council also has power to try wizards who commit crimes. Marahin explained to Lucy before pointing to the middle diagram. Build masters are right underneath the council. Their jobs is to smoothen communication between guilds in every town and to notify their guild members about council decisions, as well as bringing them all together. It's quite a difficult job to do. I had no idea that all the guilds were connected like that. Lucy said look at the request board. Connections between guilds are important. If not our system would fall apart. Marahin said. Natsu then appeared behind Lucy and pulled his finger up to his face, making a flame appear giving him a evil look. And then the guys in black would show up. Natsu smiled demonically. Haya. Lucy screamed scared out of her wits. Haha. -ha. That was too easy. Natsu laughed holding his sides. You ass. You trying to scare me to death, Lucy shouted holding a hand to her chest. But seriously the guys Natsu's talking about exist. Marahin said drawing another diagram. They're the dark guild. They chose not to join any of the other guilds. They're the bad group that are involved in magical crimes. Wow. Lucy said amazed and a little scared. Would you just hurry up and pick a job? Natsu asked putting his hands behind his head. You've got to be kidding me, what makes you think I'd want to do that? Lucy frowned. Well we are a team you know. Natsu said. Yeah and we picked the job last time. So now it's your turn. 
Happy said jumping on up. Yeah right. As far as I'm concerned our little team's over with. Lucy huffed crossing her arms. Besides you guys didn't really need me you only wanted me cause I was a blonde. She growled remembering that mission and how that guy had no taste in women calling her ugly. Don't be silly that's not the only reason we picked you. We picked you cause you're so nice. Natsu smiled. Yeah right. Lucy muttered. Hey Lucy I wouldn't stay with those losers if I were you. Lucy, Natsu and Marahan looked over them to see a 18 year old boy that was lean and muscular, with a slightly pale skin, having spiky and kinda wavy dark blue hair that reached the back of his neck, with dark blue eyes he had on a chain necklace that has a sword with a stone on it, right now he was only in his dark blue underwear sitting at a table. He had the fairy tale symbol in dark blue on his right muscle on his chest. You'll get plenty of more offers from other teams. This was Grey Fullbuster, Fairy Tale's ice wizard who has a bad habit of taking off his clothes. Their clothes gray. A 18-year-old girl that was tan-skinned and slightly taller, that had a slim and great figure having long brown hair that stopped at her upper back, that also has two shoulder-length bangs framing her face with purple eyes, wearing light blue bikini top that held her D-cup breasts, metal bracelets on her biceps, three metal round bracelets on her wrists, brown capri pants with a pink belt around her waist, and high-heeled sandals sitting on the other side of the table drinking beer from a mug. She had the fairy tale symbol in black on her left waist right above her hip. This was Kana Alberona, Fairy Tale's heaviest drinker. Gray looked at himself and saw he was naked making him freak out. You jerk. Natsu frowned putting his hands on his hips. That comment made Gray glare at Natsu before he was in his face, butting heads with him with Natsu glaring right back as blue and red aura came off them. Did you just call me a jerk dragon boy? And what if I did, what are you going to do about it? You mouth breather. Least I'm not a coward. You spineless wimp. You're a freak. Looks like they're at it again. Happy said munching on another fish. Honestly, those two never stop fighting. Lucy sighed. Well my Natsu wouldn't be Natsu if he wasn't fighting with Grey. Lucy looked behind her to see a 17-year-old girl that was peach-skinned and kinda petite, having white hair that reacres the back of her neck with blue eyes, wearing a blue tube top that stopped under sea cup breasts, white skirt with black shorts under it, and brown high-heeled sandals. She had the fairy tale symbol in white on her left eye. You're Natsu? Lucy asked confused. Yep. We were never introduced, but I'm Luna Strauss. Marahan and Elfman's younger sister and Natsu's girlfriend. Luna grinned closing her eyes. Natsu has a girlfriend Lucy exclaimed. Is there a problem with me being his girlfriend? Luna asked with a dangerous tone. No, 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 not at all. Lucy said nervously waving her hands. It's just for the past few days hanging with a guy like Natsu, I find it hard to believe he had a girlfriend. Well I guess I can understand that. But my Natsu-kun has his moments of smartness thanks to his big brother slash mentor. Luna sighed softly. Big brother slash mentor? Lucy asked. She's talking about the strongest man in fairy tale, said to be on par with Gildert's. Lucy and Luna looked to the side to see a surprise. It was a girl that looked exactly like Luna with the same figure and everything, but the difference was that she was wearing different clothes coming beside Marahan. She was wearing a dark red sleeveless dress that stopped at her thighs with a pink collar and white bow, on her arms above her elbows were gold rings with a pink fabric flowing down from them to her forearm, black shorts, tall black socks and brown shoes. She had the fairy tale symbol in silver on her left shoulder. There's two of you Lucy shouted surprised. We're twins genius. Luna crossing her arms. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lysanna Strauss the older twin. Lysanna smiled happily. You're only older by two minutes. Luna growled. Still older. Lysanna sang. Okay, that's enough you two. Marahan giggled. Wait, what was Lysanna saying about someone being unpaired against the Gilderts? Fairy tales ace. Lucy asked. Oh that would be the king of fairs, Oberon. Marahan said looking down. The Oberon? Lucy asked stunned. I heard he was the strongest wizard around his age group before he disappeared three years ago. Yeah, nobody's seen him since. Marahan said tightening her dress. So Lucy since you're not on a team wanna be on one with me? Lucy was brought out of her stunus with someone wrapped their arm around her shoulders, making her turn her head to see it was a young man that was a little taller than her having mildly short spiky orange hair with hazel eyes that were covered with blue shades wearing a green coat having brownish white fur trimming the hood with a red shirt under it, black pants, and white sneakers that had green stripes on them smiling at her pushing his glasses up. This was Loke, Fairy Tale's most edible bachelor. Huh? Lucy said. It's just that you're so dazzling I have to keep my shades on when I look at you, or else I'll go blind. Loke grinned. Girls fall for this. Lucy wondering what the girls were on to fall for things like this. Suddenly he looked at Lucy's waist seeing her keys before he freaked out. You're not a celestial wizard are you Loke screamed. Um, yeah I am. Lucy answered. Oh twisted why must you be so cruel. 
Loke said clutching his heart before running away out of the guild. I'm sorry but you and me can't be together my dear. What got into him? Lucy asked. Loke has a bad history with celestial wizards. Marahan laughed. Rumor has it he dated one. Luna snickered. Yeah, and it didn't end well for him. Lysanna giggled. Really? Lucy smiled with amusement. Lucy was suddenly knocked down to the ground by Natsu who was pushed into her. That looked painful. Marahan and Lysanna quiped. Would you two knock it off already? Lucy groaned. Grace started it. Natsu said. No it was Natsu, I'm just following through. Gray smirked closing his eyes and raised his right fist. Where are your clothes? Kana asked making Gray freak out again. Well you were the one provoking me. You dirty slimball. Natsu glared standing up. Oh yeah? And what did I do to provoke you? You fire clown. Gray glared right back. You pervy flasher. Pink haired punk. Lame insults guys. Lucy deadpanned. The rest of the guild laughed seeing the two argue making Lucy smiled at the family feeling environment around the guild. Some things never do change around here. Someone spoke in a male voice. Lucy turned her head to see who spoke before looking up and saw a person dressed in a black cloak that had a zipper going up the front with ties for the hood on the sides that had a small chain connecting the two sides with black gloves, black pants and black boots sitting on the railing where she first saw the master jump on with his hands on it beside him. Organization she cloaks. Who are you? Lucy asked. Abron. Lysanda shouted happily and waved to him. Hey there Lysanda Chan. Abron chuckled waving back. Yeah I just came back today. Abron said. Hey Kana. Look who's back. Marahin shouted turning to the drinker making her look towards Marahin before she pointed up making her look up before smiling and put her booze down and wave. Well look who finally came back to the guild. Kana laughed. I wasn't gone that long. Abron said. You left three years ago, bro. To some people that's pretty long. Luna smirked. Luna's right Abron. Some people have really missed you. Marahin muttered. Yeah. Lysanna agreed crossing her arms. They are right. Kana added in grabbing a bear barrel and drinking from it. Yeah I bet some did and some didn't. Abron retorted waving his hand dismissively making the girls frown. If you guys are ganging up on me I can only imagine how Urza will react when she see me. Abron chuckled. Who knows? Luna laughed before looking at Natsu and Grey. Hey Natsu-kun, Grey look how's back. They both ignored her and continued to glare at one another. Honestly those two. Lysanna sighed. So you're really Abron? Lucy asked. That's me. You a new member? Abron said. Yep. Name's Lucy. Lucy introduced. Nice to meet you Lucy. I see we have another beautiful woman joining fairy tale. Abron smiled under his hood. Thank you. Lucy smiled blushing. We got bad news. Loke shouted gravely coming back and slamming the doors opened. Everyone looked at him in confusion wondering what did he so spooked. It's Urza. She's on her way here. That made everyone freak out and become scared. Wow, just mentioning her freaks the whole place out. Lucy said. Well she is the strongest female wizard we got here in fairy tale. Marahan said. Yeah, she's more than a little intimidating. Lysanna chuckled nervously. Little being put lightly sis. Luna scoffed. Let's see how much hers has changed. Abron said placing his right elbow on his knee and his hand on his head. Everyone heard large footsteps coming towards the guild putting everyone in fear. That's gotta be her. Those sound like her footsteps. Even the air's gone completely still. Man from these reactions you'd think she was some kind of demon. Lucy said imagining a monster making her frightened. I'm so scared. Everyone saw a shadowy figure come in carrying a large horn before they put him down making a crashing sound when light shinned on the figure everyone saw the person. It was a 19 year old girl that has light peach skin and an amazing slender figure like most girls having long scarlet hair that reached her butt having two bangs reaching her collarbone with brown eyes, wearing heart cruz amor that was a simple armor that a breastplate compassed of a single piece of metal that did little to hide her e-cup breasts, decorated with curved lines and a deformed yellow sursily cross, with the cross's right arm extended to the right side of her armor, with a shorter left arm covering the fairy tail mark in purple underneath it, large and detailed shoulder guards, a waist guard compassed of simply of two elaborate elaborate plates hanging from a simple belt over a thinner pair of plates circling her waist, plated gauntlets that extended up to her elbows, covered by elbow guards adorned by protruding metal ornaments reminiscent of feathers, a prominent armored collar circling her neck and leaving the front side open, diamond-shaped silver earrings, a short blue skirt that reached her thighs, and long black leather boots that reached under her knees. This was Urza Scarlet, fairy tale's strongest female wizard. I have returned, where's Master Makarov? Urza asked. Wow, she's beautiful. Lucy breathed. Welcome back Urza. The master's at a conference right now. Marahin said. I see. Urza nodded placing her hands on her hips. Hey what's that humongous thing you got there? A guild member asked. It's the horn of a monster I defeated. 
The locals were so thankful that they decorated it and gave it to me as a souvenir. Urza said looking at him. Do you have a problem with it? No. Not at all. The guild member said waving his hands. You know she's not anything I imagined. Lucy said. Wait for it. Luna snickered. Now listen up. Urza said glaring at everyone. While I was on the road I heard a few things. Word is fairy tale has been causing nothing but trouble as of late. Master Makarov may not care, but I most certainly do. She said in an angry upset tone, making most of the guild members cower in fear. Kana. Urza exclaimed startling the brunette. You need to start controlling your drinking and drink like a normal person. She then started to dig at the other members. Vegeta. Take the dancing outside. Bukaba. Your damn cigarette butts are all over the floor. Get rid of that filthy habit. Nab. I figured I find you loitering around at the request board, just pick a damn job already. So I honestly you guys cause so much trouble sometimes I've almost given up. Urza said putting her hand against her head and shook it. She's really tearing into everyone. Lucy muttered nervously. It's like she's taking over. That's Urza for ya. Happy grinned. There's nobody like her. Lysana giggled. Even if she's a little bossy, she's saner than anyone else here. I don't get why everyone's so afraid of her. Lucy said. You'll learn soon enough. Abron muttered. Are Natsu and Grey around? Urza asked. H hey there Urza. We're just hanging around like good friends do. Grey smiled nervously as his and Natsu's arms were wrapped around each other, shaking hands like old buddies sweating in fear, Grey a little more than Natsu. Hey I. Natsu agreed nervously. Why is Natsu talking like happy? Lucy exclaimed shocked. That's great. I'm quite pleased to see you two getting along so well. Urza smiled nodding her head. However it's only natural that even the best of friends squabble every now and then. I wouldn't say we're the best of friends. Grey added. Aye. Natsu added in. What's gotten into Natsu? Lucy asked. Natsu had a slight fear of Urza. A few years ago he challenged her to a fight and she beat him up pretty badly. Marahin answered. Well that was stupid. Lucy said. Then she caught Grey walking around naked so she beat him up too. Luna added in. And let's not forget she beat up Loke for trying to hit on her. Kana said smugly. He totally deserved it too. Luna snorted trying to hold in her laughter at the memory. Though that's what you get when you go after a woman that's Lighty already taken. Yeah I can't say I blame her. Lucy quipped. You never change Urza. Still taking charge as always. Abron said. Urza heard his voice and looked up finally noticing him making her eyes widen in surprise. Abron? Urza asked. That made everyone look and see him finally noticing who's in the guild. Hey, it's Abron. He's back. You think he's still? Probably, I mean he did leave on bad terms. And we were all pretty. Hush. You know how we're forbidden from talking about it. He's wearing that cloak again. Makes him look mysterious. Abron? Gray said surprised. Hey there Nai-san. Natsu grinned waving. Yo, been a while. Abron waved. However he suddenly cartwheeled out the way as Urza charged at him and slammed her fist into the railing, making a hole splitting the wood, making everyone shake in fear. Now what was that for? Abron asked crouching down like a cat. You were gone for three years you ass. You think you can just walk back in here like nothing happened and think everything's okay, Urza shouted glaring at him. Pretty much. Abron shrugged. Big mistake. Urza charged at him again and punched him, but Abron blocked it, she tried to punch him with her other fist, but he blocked that too. Now Urza let's just talk this over. Abron said jumping over her and landed down below beside Marahin. I even brought you back a present in case you did something like this when I came back. There is nothing I want from you that'll stop me from pounding you into the ground. Urza growled jumping down before running to him pulling her fist back. Not even my famous special and strawberry cheesecake. Abron offered. Urza stopped her fist right there two inches from his face looking at Abron's shadowed face. Is it top with your special cream? Urza asked. Duh. Abron nodded. Oh Abron I missed you. Urza exclaimed happily wrapping her arms around his neck hugging him. Sure Urza sure. Abron chuckled hugging her back giving her a few pats. Um what just happened? Lucy asked fearfully from the display Urza just did. That was Urza's fury being quenched by the offer of Abron's delicious foods. Luna said. Not that I blame her. Abron's cooking is to die for. Kana drinking from a beer mug. Amen. Marahin and Lysana agreed nodding their heads. Is his cooking really that good? Lucy thought. But seriously it's good to have you back. Urza said as they separated. Hey, where's Yukiana? Yeah, didn't she leave with you? Happy asked. She said she'll be back in a few days. She just went to go check on something. Abron said waving his hand. Suddenly there was a rumbling sound coming from outside the guild, making everyone shake. W what's that Lucy asked. An earthquake. Gray wondered. But this big Natsu screamed. Wait, it sounds like a pair of rapid footsteps. Lysana said hearing it closely. Yeah I hear it too. 
Luna said hearing it as well. Wait a sec I heard this before. Abron muttered. Really? Kana asked raising an abro. Yeah it was from Abron said before he went stiff. Oh no, what? Lucy said. Suddenly the rumbling came closer making Abron nervous. Moran. Abron yelled grabbing her shoulders. You gotta hide me. Huh? How? Morahan questioned surprised with how Abron was acting as the rumbling got closer. Hide me. Abron went behind her and lifted dress before going under it. Oh Abron. Morahan exclaimed blushing. What the? Urza, Lucy, Lasana, Kana shouted. Dude. Luna, Natsu, and Grey yelled. Before anything can be said the guild doors bursted open and a pale-skinned woman walked in. She had black hair that reached her shoulders with green eyes wearing brown t-shirt with white jacket over it, blue jeans, and black high-heeled sandals. Who's that? Lucy whispered. That's Alana. The owner of Fairy Hills. Luna said. Fairy Hills? Lucy asked. It's a female dormitory where our female guild members live. Lasana said. All right, where is he? Alana shouted making everyone jump. Where's who? Natsu asked. I know Oberon is here. I have a sixth sense to locate him when he's in Magnolia Town. Now where is he? Alana demanded with her hands on her hips. Everyone looked away from her not wanting to look in her eyes or have the heart to tell where Abaron really was. Fine then, I'll find him myself. Ilana huffed looking around the guild. Think she'll find him? Kana whispered. If she does it'll be embarrassing for him and Nichan. Lysanna whispered back. Ilana continued to look around the guild before she sensed something and made her way towards Morahan, making her nervous. Morahan long time no see. How you been? Ilana asked sweetly. I I've been good Ilana. Morahan chuckled nervously. That's good. So you wouldn't happen to know where Abaron is do you? Ilana questioned. Um no. Morahan answered. Really? Ilana said walking around Morahan until she was behind her. So you won't mind if I did this? Ilana lifted up Morahan's dress before and black blur zoomed out of it only for Ilana to grab it, making it fall down to reveal Abaron on the ground with his leg grabbed. Bam. Abaron said snapping his fingers. Did you really think you could hide from your aunt Ilana? Ilana smirked waving her finger. You're not my real aunt. Abaron complained. But I helped looked after you when you came to fairy tale. Ilana said. Fine. Abaron huffed before getting up and turned to her. Why did you come looking for me anyway? Why else? So you could move back in at Fairy Hills. Ilana said like it was the simplest thing in the world. That shocked everyone in the guild. What? They yelled. Yeah, Abaron has been living at Fairy Hills since he was 13. Ilana said. The but Fairy Hills only allow girls in it. Lysanna stammered. I do. However Abaron is the only exception of allowing a male to live there. Ilana smirked waving her finger. How can Abaron live at Fairy Hills? Gray asked confused. Well six years ago I was walking on my way back to Magnolia Town from visiting an old friend in another town when suddenly wizards from a dark guild ganged up on me and started harassing me. I started to fight them off but there were too many of them and they started to beat up on me when I was down they were going to rape me before Abaron here came by and beaten those creeps near half to death when he finished he said and I quote you scumbags have no shame hurting and trying to do something disgusting to this woman I ought to kill you but leaving you near death and for the authorities to take you away is just as good. Who knows you'll probably end up being someone's bitch for your deeds. After that he took me back to Fairy Hills where he took care of me and nursed me back to health for the next three days. After that I felt like I owed a great debt to Abaron, so I offered him a room at Fairy Hills. Naturally him being the great gentleman he was he declined, but after I used my feminine charm he accepted. And ever since then he's been secretly living there ever since. Ilana explained. By the time Ilana finished everyone was looking at Abaron with stun looks, heck even some of the girls swooned for his selfless act. I must say Abaron that was very heroic of you. Urza smiled. Well you know. Abaron chuckled rubbing the back of his head. And why are you wearing that cloak again? Ilana asked. So people didn't recognize me when I traveled around Earthland. Abaron said. Well you don't need it now since you're back so take it off. Ilana said. What? No way. This is my favorite cloak. Abaron wind. Abaron. Ilana warned sternly putting her hands on her hips. Not going to happen. Abaron said stubbornly crossing his arms. Well can you at least pull down your hoodie so I can see your face again? Ilana asked. I don't know. Abaron muttered. Please. Ilana pleaded with big watery eyes pouting her lip, making Abaron uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Just stop with the look. Abaron begged waving his hands. Deal. Ilana smiled happily with her eyes closed. Abaron sighed before placing his hands on the hood and slowly pulled it down, showing his face to everyone making the men growl in jealousy and the women blush and swoon again. 
Oberon's face was handsome and tan-skinned, as he had a perfectly angular and muscular jaw with whisker marks on his cheeks, having spiky silver hair that reached the upper part of his back, with bangs hanging from the sides of his face, coming to his collarbone with ocean blue eyes. I must say, it looks like you've gotten more handsome since I last saw you. Ilana grinned bringing her hand to his face rubbing his cheek. Now if I only I was a few years younger, Aunt Ilana Oberon said embraced. Am Naruto kun, you're even hotter now than you were back then. Kana chuckled drinking her beer. I didn't even think that was possible. Naruto? Lucy asked. That's my real name. Oberon is just a title. Now revealed Naruto looked at Lucy. Allow me to properly introduce myself, Naruto Uzumaki, Fairy Tales Oberon. Well now that that's out of the way, come on Naruto. I want you to get situated back at Fairy Hills. Ilana said gesturing for Naruto to follow her as she walked off. I'll see you guys later. Naruto said following Ilana out the door. I had no idea that Oberon was so hot. Lucy squealed holding her hands to her face. Yeah Naruto is definitely the hottest guy in fairy tale. Marahan giggled. No, he's not. Many men shouted. Yes he is. Urza, Marahan, Kana, Lasana, and a few females said making the men crash down on the flow, feeling their ego and pride taking a fatal blow. Even I'll admit Nai San is hot, but my one and only man is my Natsu-kun. Luna smiled. Aw thanks babe. Natsu smiled walking up to Luna and kissing her on the lips, wrapping his arm around her waist, pulling her close to him as she placed her hands on his face, deepening the kiss. Oh Lucy said blushing at how intense Natsu and Luna were kissing. Oh get a room. Grey groaned looking away. Natsu and Luna just flipped him off making Grey growl. Now Grey, you know how in love those two are. Kana said. Yeah, they've been that way since they were kids. Marahin said. Oh that reminds me, Natsu and Grey, I need you to do me a favor. Urza said getting Grey's attention while Natsu and Luna stopped making out and looked at her. Fairy Hills. Elena and Naruto came to the top floor and opened the door, showing a large living room that had an equally large kitchen. Taking a look around the room they saw it had a large bathroom, with a large bedroom with a very large king-size bed, a balcony beside the living room, and beside his bed was a door that led to Naruto's special training room. Everything is still the same when I left it. Naruto smiled. Yep. I made sure to keep this place clean till you returned. Elana grinned. Thanks Ilana. Naruto thanked hugging her. No prob. Ilana said hugging him back before she separated from him. Well I better let you get settled back in. And welcome back. Ilana then walked out the room leaving Naruto alone. Naruto smiled before frowning and walked to his bedroom before flopping down on the bed burying his head in his pillow. After all this time I'm back. Naruto sighed before turning around and looking at the ceiling. And with how I left, can I really look at my guildmates the same way? His thoughts lead to the past on why he left in the first place getting flashes here and there. Naruto then placed his right arm over his eyes. At least I had a few who stood by me through it all. He chuckled thinking about a smiling Natsu and happy, a laughing and giggling Luna and Lasana, a grinning Grey, a smirking Urza, and a couple of others. He was broken out of his thoughts when a humming sound came from his left pocket, making Naruto reach in and pull out a crystal orb known as a communication lacrima that was blinking. Having a feeling on who it was Naruto sat up and tapped a lacrima with his right hand as an astral projection came out and showed who was calling him. It was a pale-skinned woman having long dark purple hair that reached the back of her hip that had bangs coming down to her chest that also had a white band head on her head framing her bangs. There was also two large gold-looking horns protruding from the sides of her head pointing upwards. There was also a small U symbol with a small dot on the inside, surrounded by four dots on both sides with purple eyes, wearing a very revealing beige-colored leopard-printed kimono that went to her thighs showing off her bare shoulders that had the same mark on her forehead and F-cup breasts with a black obi wrapped around her waist with a yellow ribbon on it, a white strap around her neck, and black thigh-high socks that revealed her heels and toes. Hello darling. The woman smiled. Hey Sela chan Naruto greeted smiling back. I take it you arrived at Fairy Tail? Sela asked. Yeah. Naruto nodded. And how are your old guildmates taking your return? Sela wondered. Well some are glad to have me back, others are don't know how to approach me. Some still think I'm angry with them. Naruto answered. Are you? A little. I mean they just ganged up on me you know. I understand darling, but don't forget they also led you back to me and we reunited. I know, and I appreciate for you being so understanding about all this. Well I was created to serve you and only you unlike the others. Plus we do have history together. Sela smiled softly. Tell me about it. Some of the stuff I still can't believe. Naruto chuckled. Know that no matter what happens, I will always be by your side. Sela stated. I appreciate it Sela chan Naruto smiled. I know darling. Well I better get going and continue on my recon, don't want Kyoka-sama to catch wind of our plans. Sela grinned. Alright. Love you. Naruto grinned waving. Love you too. 
Sayla winked blowing a kiss. And with that the lacrima turned off making Naruto sigh and fall back down on the bed. Just another day. Naruto muttered raising his right hand to his face. A lot has happened in the last three years. I wonder how things will be now that I'm back. He clenched his fist before a look of determination came on his face. But no matter what comes my way, I'll be ready. Naruto decided to get some sleep and closed his eyes drifting off into slumber, not knowing what the next day would bring. After two taking care of Eisenwald, Naruto was in the kitchen fixing himself some breakfast that was eggs, toast, bacon, and hash brin, so he could start the day as he woke up a little late. I wonder what everyone at the guild is doing. Naruto thought setting his food down on the table. If I know them, they're probably roughhousing like usual. He began eating his breakfast and wondered what he was going to do today. I could probably hang out with Lasana and Luna today. Or maybe take a job from the request board. As he was thinking Naruto quickly devoured his food before taking his dishes in the sink. Before he could ponder any longer there was a knock at his door. Who could that be? Naruto wondered as he walked towards the door and opened it to show Urza was on the other side. Good morning Naruto. Urza smiled. Urza, hey. Naruto greeted. What's up? Well I was wondering if you were busy. Urza asked. No, not really. Naruto shook his head. Well I was wondering if you would like to come on a mission with me, Natsu, and Grey. Urza said. The team of Urza, Natsu, and Grey. Man that's a teammate for destruction. With what the training regime I left for Natsu and Grey when I left and the one I gave Urza, I'm sure all three are ridiculously strong right now. Naruto thought thinking about. Then again, it would be nice to be on a team with all three of them again. Back then I would go on a mission with each one. He then looked at Urza and smiled making a decision. Sure Urza it'll be like old times, but with the three of us. I'm glad. Urza grinned before frowning confusing Naruto. Listen Naruto are you still bitter? Bitter? Naruto asked. You know about what happened that day Urza muttered. Naruto just looked down with his hair covering his eyes and tightened his fists. Urza if it's alright with you, I would like to avoid talking about it. Naruto whispered. I understand. Urza said placing her hand under his chin making him look at her. Just know if you ever need someone to talk to I listen. Thanks Urza. Naruto smiled making Urza smile back. Well then. Urza stepped back clapping her hands. Let's go meet Natsu and Grey at the train station shall we? Sure. Naruto nodded. Naruto then saw Urza went to go get something and when she came back he sweat dropped on what he saw. Magnolia Station. Arg. I hate this. Teaming up with you has got to be worst idea ever. Tell me about it. Urza made a huge mistake asking a loser like you to come along. Fine then, why don't you take care of it yourself? I don't want to go anyway. Sounds like a plan to me then I get to watch her beat you senseless. Ha. As if she could. Says the idiot with a death wish. We're at the train station where Natsu and Grey were arguing about not being on a team with each other. Though this time Grey was fully clothed wearing a blue trimmed white high collared jacket that reached his thighs, a black shirt underneath, dark green pants, and black boots. A little ways from them Lucy and Happy were sitting down on a bench as Happy was eating fish. Let's just pretend like we don't know them. Lucy sighed. What made you come along Lucy? Happy asked. Marahin and Luna asked me to keep an eye on those two. They knew they would be at each other's throats when hers is not looking. Lucy said. Well you're not doing a very good job of it. Happy pointed out. They're hopeless. Lucy just said. Sorry I'm late. Have you been waiting long? Lucy heard Urza's voice making Natsu and Grey stop stiffening up. No, not really. Lucy smiled turning to her before she got a shock look. Urza was standing there with a massive amount of luggage behind her with suitcases on a cart stocked up together with a rope around them having Naruto beside her. Whoa look at all that luggage. Happy exclaimed. All that belongs to her Lucy said stunned. Natsu and Grey wrapped their arms around each other acting all happy and dancing. Time to go good buddy. Grey said. I. Haha. Natsu said. Listen one happy's enough. Lucy deadpanned. Good. I'm glad to see you two getting along. Urza smiled at them before looking at Lucy who stood up. And what was your name? I believe I saw you at the guild yesterday. While she was talking to Lucy Natsu and Grey were glaring at each other behind her back. Her name's Lucy. A new member. Naruto said. Yeah I just joined. Marahin and Luna asked me to come along to learn a thing or two. Lucy said. That okay. The more the merrier. I'm Urza. Wait you're the girl I heard about. Urza said before glancing at Natsu and Grey seeing they're all buddy buddy before looking back at Lucy and they went back to glaring at each other. I was told you defeated a mercenary gorilla with only your pinky. That made Lucy sweat drop chuckling nervously. Wow impressive Lucy. Naruto grinned. It'll be great to have a wizard like you on board. Thanks for your help. Urza smiled. No problem. Lucy said nervously before looking at Naruto. Anyway what are you doing here Naruto? I was asked to come along. Really had nothing better to do. Naruto shrugged. Hey Nai-san. 
Naruto turned around and looked at Natsu. What is it Atado-chan? Naruto asked. If you're coming along I want something from you. Natsu said. And that would be? Naruto wondered. I want to fight you when we get back to Fairy Tail. Natsu smirked raising his fist up. Are you crazy? He'll obliterate you. Gray said. Besides I figured you would battle Urza instead. Urza can wait, I want to prove to Nai-san that I've gotten stronger since he left. So what do you say Nai-san? Natsu said. Alright then. I can see you've been improving yourself since my absence. When we get back show me what you got. Naruto grinned. Oh yeah. Natsu shook with anticipation before raising his head back and shot flames out his mouth. I'm all fired up. On the train, someone kill me now. Natsu groaned weakly sinking in his seat sweat pouring off his body as his stomach churned. The gang was sitting in their seats aside from each other Naruto and Urza on one side, Grey, Lucy, Natsu and Happy on the other. Man you're pathetic Natsu. One minute you're picking a fight the next you're like this. Grey sighed in annoyance. Betting around must be hard on him. Lucy muttered. He'll be fine in a sec. Hang on little bro. Naruto got up and placed his right hand on Natsu's head as it glowed a white color making Natsu looking less pale and his skin looking normal, making him feel better. When it was done Naruto sat back down beside Urza. There you go. He smiled. Thanks big bro. Natsu sighed in relief. Wow. How'd you do that? Lucy asked amazed. I have many talents my dear. Naruto said sagely. Knock it off you. Urza smiled elbowing him making Naruto chuckle. Urza I think now it's about time for you to fill us in. I mean what kind of mission are we going on here? Grey asked. I have reason to bell of the Dark Guild Eisenwald is planning something big. I'm not sure what exactly but I do know it has something to do with a magic item called lullaby. Urza said. Lullaby? Grey and Happy said hearing that word before. Wait a sec. Natsu muttered. Yeah that thing from before. Lucy said. Urza frowned while Naruto brought his fingers to his chin and thought. Lullaby? Didn't Sayla mention something about it to me before? Naruto thought. Natsu, Happy, Grey, and Lucy told Urza and Naruto about encountering wizards that mention lullaby. I see. Urza said. We're not really sure if they were from Eisenwald, but they definitely mention lullaby. Grey said. Sounds like to me they were ex-members that went into hiding. Naruto said crossing his arms and put one leg over the other. Perhaps they didn't want to be part of whatever that was happening. Urza theorized. So this thing is so bad it scares dark wizards. Natsu asked. Whoever took Happy's kidnappers must be with Eisenwald and didn't want their plans leaking out. Naruto said. What do you think they're going to try? Lucy wondered. Let me start from the beginning. I was heading back from my last mission when I stopped by a bar in Onibus where wizards tend to gather. Flashback three days ago, Urza was sitting by herself at the bar table with a drink in her hand. That last mission was nothing too serious. I'm gonna need more of a challenge if I want to see where I am with him. Urza muttered. Rah. Where the hell is my booze? A voice yelled from across the bar. Urza turned her head and spotted a table with four wizards on the other side of the bar. One of the wizards appeared to be hassling with one of the bar waitresses. Boy. Why the hell are you so slow? One of the mages yelled as he waved his empty mug. The mage had his feet kicked up on the table. Do I'm sorry, I'll be all right back with your drink. The waitress said in a shaky voice before she ran back to the bar to fetch the drinks. Don't get so upset. The second wizard chastised as he leaned back in his chair. How can I not be pissed off about this? The first wizard exclaimed slamming his mug onto the table. We finally found the hidden lullaby, but it was all sealed up. How'd that even happen? We have no way of breaking the seal. Idiot. Keep it down. You're being too fucking loud. Another wizard mage hissed. Don't sweat it you guys. A fourth wizard said. I'll take care of this, so you guys head back to the guild. Just let Aragra know I will be back with lullaby in three days. For real did you figure out how to break the seal the first wizard said with wide eyes. Oh. Great work cage. The second wizard exclaimed with a smirk. Back to the present, lullaby is it some sort of magic that puts people to sleep? Lucy asked. I don't know but since it's sealed, it probably contains a very powerful magic. Urza replied looking at the floor. Wait, I don't get it. Gray said, leaning forward in his seat. So you came across some wizards that wanted to break the seal off some unknown magic, maybe it was just for a job they were doing. That's what I thought at first. Urza said before her eyes darkened. That is, until I remembered the name Eriger. The Eisenwald Guild's ace, Eriger the Reaper. I've heard of him here received that nickname because he only takes assassination requests. Naruto said causing Lucy to gulp in fear. Why you mean he kills for money? Lucy stuttered. The council forbids wizards from taking assassination jobs, but Eisenwald chose money over following the rules. Urza explained. As a result they were kicked out their wizard league six years ago, but that didn't stop them. They disobeyed orders and remained active and was labeled a dark guild. 
Dark Guild Lucy whispered as she began to sweat in fear. Oh okay maybe I should head back home now. Lucy slimy all of a sudden. Happy said. That sweat. Lucy said. How could I've been so careless? If only I had recognized Aragor's name that day I could have pulverized them. I could have forced them to reveal their scheme to me. Urza said angrily. Scary. Lucy thought fearfully. So if I got this right Eisenwald's planning to do something with this lullaby and you want to stop them. Natsu said. Because of what you overheard from them you think it's something bad. Grace said. That's correct. And I'm not foolish to think I can take on an entire dark guild all by myself. That's why I asked you and Natsu along with Naruto to come along. Urza nodded. We're storming the Eisenwald guild and taking them down ourselves. Sound like fun to me. Grace said with a smirk. Oh yeah, I'm getting all pumped up. Natsu said with a grin. I. Happy smiled. I really should have stayed home. Lucy groaned sweating more in fear. You. Now you're super slimy. Happy moaned in disgust. I told you, it's wet. Lucy shouted. Don't worry Lucy, we'll make sure nothing happens to you. Naruto said with a charming smile. Thanks Naruto. Lucy sighed smiling feeling safe from his words blushing a bit. The train stopped and they got off to get something to eat before they got back on the train and started eating. Lucy and Gray were eating sandwiches, Natsu was eating a turkey leg, Happy was eating fish, Urza was eating strawberry cheesecake, and Naruto was eating ramen. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of magic do you use Urza, Naruto? Lucy asked. Urza's magic is really pretty. She makes her enemies bleed. Happy said happily. I don't know if I call that pretty. Lucy sweat dropped. Personally I think Gray's magic is much more beautiful than mine. Urza said eating a piece of her cake. Oh really? Gray stuck out his left hand opened and put his right fist on top of it as a blue magic seal appeared and mist came out from his fist before he opened it and a small ice fairy tale symbol came out. Since I'm a ice wizard I use ice magic. Oh cool. Lucy gushed before realizing something. Now I know why you and Natsu don't get along. He's fire and your ice. Eh, never thought about it like that. Urza smiled softly. DCH, I just hate his guts. Natsu and Gray said turning away from each other. Don't worry Lucy they've both been like this since they were kids. Believe it or not it's how they get along. Naruto chuckled. Yeah. Lucy giggled before looking at Naruto. So what about your magic? Ah Lucy, that's a story I have to tell for another time. Naruto grinned waving his finger. After all a handsome guy like me has to keep his secrets, right? He winked. W well Lucy stuttered blushing. You have secrets. Please Naruto you're more honest as they come. Urza smirked. I'll have you know I too have secrets Urza. Naruto huffed like a child turning his head away. That just made everyone laugh with Naruto joining in. This is how it should be. Naruto thought happily. After a while the train stopped at Inaba station and everyone got off. Do you think Eisenwald is still in this town Urza? Naruto asked. I have no idea. That's what we're here to find out. Urza said. This whole thing sounds like it's going to get messy. Lucy said. I just hope these guys will be a decent workout. Grace said. Hey guys. Happy said gaining their attention. Where's Natsu? That made everyone freeze up before they looked at the departing train. Damn. My healing must have worn off and he didn't get off the train. Naruto muttered. There he goes. Happy said. I can't believe we forgot about him. Lucy choked out. Damn, Natsu hates all transportation. I am such a fool for not noticing he wasn't following us earlier, I need one of you to come and hit me for my forgetfulness. Urza grit her teeth and clenched her fist up. Oh brother. Naruto sighed. I hear ya. Gray nodded in agreement. Back on the train, Ron W why the fuck am I as still on this thing? Natsu moaned weakly as he sat slumped in his seat. I guess and I sent spell war off. Well looky here, it's a fairy tale wizard. Natsu slowly raised his head to see a man having black hair up and a spiky ponytail with black eyes wearing a white shirt with a high collar over a dark red undershirt, aquamarine pants, and black shoes smiling down at him. How's the guild treating you these days? Is it worth sticking around? The man grinned closing his eyes. What? Natsu said confused. But the answer he received a fierce kick to the face as the guy put his foot on Natsu's face. Don't act all high and mighty just cause you're an illegal guild, Mr. Fairy. You guys just blindly follow the magic council. You know what you look like to us harmless little flies. He insulted making Natsu angry as he pushed off the guy's foot and stood up with fire encasing his fists as the guy jumped back. Looks like I hit a nerve. The guy smirked. Why you? Natsu snarled about to beat this guy into a pulp. Only for the train to rock making Natsu's fire go out and he tried resisting the urge to vomit. Ahaha. What the fuck kind of magic was that? The guy laughed he then stopped and shot Natsu a evil grin. Let me show you how it's done. 
a purple magic seal appeared under his feet, and several tendrils made of shadows shot out of the Kajayama's own shadow off the ground and hit Natsu with a powerful uppercut, but he blocked by crossing his arm. Ha ha ha. The guy laughed as Natsu skid across fell to the floor on his feet glaring at the guy. Suddenly a loud screeching sound echoed throughout the train making Natsu and the guy fall down making something fall from the guy's shirt. After a few moments the train came to a complete stop and the guy groaned in pain pushing himself off the ground. D the train stopped. Natsu said forcing himself to his feet. But he saw something on the floor getting his attention. The object was a wooden flute with a three-eyed skull at the top. Shit, you saw it. The guy swore. Shut up. Natsu roared slamming his fists together as a red magic seal appeared over it with a dragon face on it and fire surrounded his fists. It's payback time motherfucker. Natsu charged at him and slammed his fist into the guy's face the guy was sent flying across the train car and into the end of the cart. The guy spit out some blood as he struggled to get to his feet. Lucky shot. The guy groaned wiping his face. Who's the fly now you bastard? Natsu said with a grin as he raised his fist up. Suddenly the intercoms on the train came to life. We've confirmed that the emergency brake was due to a false report. We'll be departing shortly. We thank you for your patience. Fuck that, I'm out of here. Natsu screamed as he ran and grabbed his bags. Hold it right there. I won't let you get away that easily. The guy yelled. You picked a fight with Eisenwald. Don't think you can get away. Oh. So you're with Eisenwald, huh? That makes things easy for me since you're the guys we're looking for. I'll show you what happens with guys who mock fairy tale. Natsu snarled at the guy. Why don't we take this outside? Before they could do anything the train started to move making Natsu covered his mouth with his hand. Before his motion sickness could get worse for him Natsu jumped out the train's window and much to his surprise there was a magic car tailing the train. As Natsu flew closer to the magic car his eyes widened when he saw that Urza was driving it with Naruto beside her, Lucy sticking her head out the window and Grey on the roof holding on. Uwais. Natsu yelled as he flew closer to the magical vehicle. Natsu Urza exclaimed as her eyes widened. What the? Naruto exclaimed. Why the fuck did you fly out of the train? Grey yelled. Is that Natsu? Lucy yelled. Grey's eyes widened as Natsu headed straight for him at high speed and they collided with their head crashing together head first and were sent flying off the magic car. Lil bro. Are you alright? Naruto asked as Urza slammed on the brakes. Why yeah, I'm good. Natsu groaned rubbing his forehead. Grey are you okay? Lucy asked as everyone got out the magic car. I'm fine, thanks for asking. Grey said as he dusted himself off as him and Natsu got up. God damn it Natsu. That hurt you idiot. He shouted turning to him. Shut up you icy freak. How come you guys left me on the train? Natsu shouted. Sorry about that Itadu-chan. Naruto said rubbing the back of his head. I'm sorry Natsu, I was careless. Urza said before placing her hand on his head and pulled him into her chest armor banging in head. I'm just glad you are uninjured. No problem. Natsu groaned rubbing his head. You guys missed it. Some punk on the train tried to pick a fight with me. He chuckled before he went all serious. He said he was from Eisenwald. That surprised everyone. He was. Urza asked earning a nod from Natsu. That's pretty convenient. Lucy said. Yeah but before I could get anything out of him the train started to move and I had to get off. Natsu said. You said he was on the train earlier, right? We have to chase after him. Urza said getting back on the magic car placing the SE plug onto her arm. Do you remember what he looked like? Grey asked. Not really, there wasn't anything special about him. Natsu said before he snapped his fingers. But he was carrying a flute with a three-eyed skull at the end of it. That's fucking creepy. Grey commented as he walked back to the four-wheeler. The flute with a three-eyed skull. Lucy said as she began to shake in fear. What's up Lucy? Happy asked flying up to the blonde. You okay? Naruto asked. I've heard about that flute before. Lullaby the curse song. Lucy said clenching her fists. It's death magic. What? Natsu exclaimed his eyes widening. The cursed song. Grey parroted with a raised eyebrow. I've only read about it in a book, but among forbidden magic, there is such a thing as murder by curse right? Lucy asked. Yeah just like the name says, it'll curse the target and cast death. It's black magic. Naruto answered making Lucy's eyes harden. Lullaby is far worse than that. It's a song that causes death to those who hear it. Lucy said. So that's where I heard that from. Sela Chan said it was made by Zeref to put down his enemies for an easy death. Naruto thought in realization before he looked at everyone. If that's the case we better get a move on. Naruto said as everyone nodded in agreement and got in or on the magic car and it took off heading to their destination to stop Eisenwald. Ashihana Station. The gang arrived at the station after finding out the Dark Guild hijacked a train and saw a crowd of people in front of the gate. They got off the magic car and went to see what was going on. Only for Urza to ask that question to the guards by headbutting them when they wouldn't answer fast enough. 
She's unbelievable. Lucy sweat dropped. Yeah, Urza has her own way of getting answers. Natsu chuckled nervously. That's Urza for you. Happy said. I'll say. Grace said. Still unorthodox. Naruto sighed. Eisenwald's inside. Let's go. Urza said. Right. Everyone nodded as they made their way inside the station. As they were running to the main station they saw an army platoon lying around everywhere in major bruises and pain. They've been wiped out. Lucy said. Well they were up against a whole guild. Natsu said. Don't worry they're alive. In pain but alive. Naruto said. Once they made it to their destination they saw the whole Eisenwald guild standing in front of them all with evil smirks on their faces. There's so many of them. Lucy whispered. Welcome. Come into our parlor fairy tale flies. The group looked up on the other floor to see a man that was extremely tall, lean built, and yet mildly muscular having silver hair that was held pointing upwards in spiky stance, but hangs down to the left of his face in a tuft reaching down his shoulders with black eyes that had circles and dark lines going down crossed with two more lines, wearing only a long purple worn-out skirt that kinda looked like a hakama, leaving his upper body bare, showing he had dark blue wavy tattoos on his shoulders, biceps, pectorals and back, a black scarf around his neck with the edges handing on the back, dark gloves that had a wide X on the backs with bandages wrapped around his forearms, and Jetta sandals with a large wooden handled scythe that had bandage wrappings around it with a skull on the base, where the long blade was in his left hand sitting on the rail looking down on them. You fiend. I take it you're Eriger. Urza said narrowing her eyes. He. Eriger chuckled. Hey you. It's your fault I got in trouble with Eriger. The guy from before said glaring at Natsu. You. Natsu growled. Name's Kajayama and you're gonna pay. Kajayama said. We're not threatened by any of you. Urza proclaimed. What do you plan to do with Lullaby? Naruto demanded. Oh. So you haven't heard. Eriger chuckled before flew in the air jetting wind. He's flying. Lucy said surprised. It's wind magic. Happy said seeing wind blew around him. What do all stations have? Eriger asked flying towards the station's loudspeakers and tapping on them. You plan to broadcast the lullaby song. Naruto growled. No way. Lucy shouted. What? Grace shouted. You bastards. Natsu growled. Ahahahaha. <laughs> Bingo. Eriger laughed with a twisted smile. There are hundreds, no thousands of people gathered around the station right now. If I broadcast it loud enough, maybe I'll extinguish the entire city with my melody of death. That's mass murder. What reason could you possibly have to act such a thing on the people of this town? Urza roared. We are simply cleaning up the fools who don't appreciate their rights they hold so dear. To those who remain ignorant that had their rights taken away. Eriger said leaning back in the air and resting his scythe on his shoulder smirking. They created a sin turning a blind eye to the world's injustice, therefore the reaper has come to punish them. But killing them isn't going to get you your rights back, it's only going to make it worse. That's the whole reason why you were kicked out the Wizard League in the first place. Lucy argued. At this point we've given up on trying to get back our rights. We want power. Eriger said bringing his hand up and clenching his fist. Then we'll be able to wash away the sins of the past and take control of what happens in the future. You guys are completely insane. Lucy shouted. We're rolling in a new age of darkness. Kajayama said slamming his hand on the ground. Of course by the time it gets here you flies will be long gone. Shadow shot out from his own towards Lucy, making her gasp in fear. Not gonna happen. Naruto said appearing in front of Lucy and slashed the shadows away with a rainbow energy slash. There will be no age of darkness while I'm around. Thanks Naruto. Lucy sighed in relief. No problem. Naruto smirked. The fairy tail flies flew right into my trap, everything is going exactly as planned. But I will not rest until they have heard Lullaby's song of death. Then we'll finally have revenge against those who wronged us. Eriger thought evilly. This is fairy tail's strongest team. You better be ready. Lucy yelled pointing at them. I leave them all to you. Eriger said flying back. Show them the power of the dark guild Eisenwald. And with that he vanished. Natsu, Grey I want you two to go after Eriger. Urza said. Um. Both wizards said confused. She's right, together you can be a force to be reckoned with. One I doubt Eriger the Reaper can stand against. Naruto said. You sure nai san? Natsu asked. Yeah, you guys are going against an entire guild. Grey added. We'll be alright. Urza smirked. You forget who they're about to deal with. Naruto grinned cracking his knuckles. Right. Natsu and Grey nodded as they left. They ran off. They're probably going after Eriger. I got it. A tan man with black eyes wearing a black and yellow jacket with a hood over his head with a white shirt under it, green pants, and brown shoes grinned. He waved his hands as black ribbons came from the bands on his fingers and wrapped around the railing before he pulled on them flinging himself on the upper floor. I the great rail will take care of them. He said before running off. I'm coming with you. That pink-haired bastard's gonna pay. 
Kajayama growled before sinking in his shadow and disappearing. So Urza, hope you haven't gotten all rusty since I've been gone. Naruto teased. Please, I'll have you know I still do your training. I should be worried about you keeping up with me. Urza teased back. Will we be able to take on all these guys ourselves? Lucy asked. Don't worry, with Naruto and Urza here this will be a piece of cake. Happy said. Two girls and one guy, heh this will be easy. Especially with the girls. My mother told me never to hit a girl, but I'll make an exception this one time. They definitely won't be pretty once we're done with them. A shame really. I wouldn't mind playing with them. Me too. Urza I believe they just signed their death warrants. Naruto grinned evilly. Indeed they have. Urza smirked before opening her hand. Let's do it. A red magic seal appeared in front of her hand, and a sword came out before she grabbed it. That magic sword came out of thin air. Lucy said. We're not scared of you. Ha. That's nothing we got plenty of swordsmen and Eisenwald. A group of Eisenwald members with swords charged at Urza, but she slashed her sword and defeated a couple of them in one swoop. More charged at her, but Urza meet them halfway and blocked one wizard with her sword before jumping up and kicked one in the face that was charging at her. She rolled out the way as two more wizards tried to slash at her before she turned around and swiped at them knocking them down, she was so busy taking care of the one in her sight, she didn't see the one coming behind her. She didn't have to worry as Naruto came from behind and swiped at them with his right hand making rainbow slashes come from his fingers colliding with them. He then charged at the other before he started punching them left hand right before ducking down as three swiped at him with swords, Naruto then started breakdancing, kicking them away from him, before he jumped up and twirled kicked them down to the ground. We'll show you. A couple of more wizards thrusted out their hands as a magic seal appeared and they fired energy blasts towards the duo, but they jumped up in the air dodging it. Nice try. Urza said. But not good enough. Naruto said. Two red magic seals appeared at the ends of Urza's sword before it flashed away, and a spear appeared while a rainbow magic seal appeared under Naruto incusing his body in rainbow energy. Now it's a spear. And Naruto's body in covered in rainbow energy. Lucy shouted. They both nodded at each other before they dashed down and started battling through the Eisenwald member left and right. Urza was swinging her spear knocking at few down before twirling her spear around and swiped at few, then turned around and slashed at a couple more. She then ducked down as more tried to ambush her, but she spinned around in a tornado blowing them away with cuts and slashes on them. While that was happening Naruto tackled some wizards down before backflipping in the air to dodge those that slashed at him with swords. When Naruto landed, he swiped his hands apart, firing a barrage of rainbow slashes at the Eisenwald wizards, knocking them into the wall or on the ground. More of them charged at the duo making Urza, flashed her spear away before it became twin swords, and Naruto made his rainbow aura disappear before rainbow flames covered his fists. The two were back to back and started attacking them in sync when one missed the enemy the other would attack in its place, when one blocked an incoming attack the other would beat the enemy to the ground. The spear turned into twin swords. And the other one is attack with his energy and color of a rainbow flame. The one of the Eisenwald members said in awe. I've never heard of magic like that. Or seen anyone requip as fast as this chick. Another Eisenwald member said. So Naruto's magic and unheard of. And what's requip? Lucy asked. Magic weaponry is no different from your celestial magic. The user can summon weapons from a different dimension. Then when they switches with those weapons it's called requiping. And Naruto's magic is like a lost magic with a powerful element that makes him a powerful wizard and a pretty hard one to beat. Happy explained. Wow, that's incredible. Lucy breathed stunned. You haven't seen anything yet. Urza and Naruto are just getting started. Happy smirked. Urza? Naruto? A fat overweighted man having spiky back green hair and black eyes wearing a red jacket with a white shirt under it that had a gold necklace around his neck, black pants and blue boots, muttered thinking he's heard those names before. Alright then, time for me to kick some ass too. Lucy smirked pulling off one of her golden keys off the keychain. Why are you trying to steal the spotlight from them? Happy asked with a deadpan look. Open. Gate of the giant crab. Cancer. Lucy declared swiping her key down as a blue magic seal appeared in front of her when it vanished a tan man having black hair that had some braided and red cornrows that end in a shape similar to a crab spincers with sunglasses with green lens over his eyes, wearing a blue striped dress shirt with a gold necklace around his neck, black pants, and black boots, he also had six crab-like legs coming out of his back, and in his hands were a pair of red scissors. You need me to fight these dudes, baby? Cancer asked. Yeah, take them out with style. Lucy smirked pulling out her whip as the Eisenwald wizards charged at her and cancer. I ain't never seen such a stupid haircut. You look like an idiot. Let's take it and the blonde chick out. Ibs on the blonde with a nice rack. Oh yeah, baby. Cancer swifted through the enemy dodging their attacks, and snip sounds were appearing behind them in a crouch position, when he stood up on their hair fell off leaving them bald, and their weapons crumbled away, showing they've been cut up. Ah. 
My hair. What did you do? We're all bald now. And our weapons. Bearing pieces. Like your new hairstyle baby. Cancer grinned sniping his scissors. Yeah, and here's the finisher. Lucy jumped up in the air and spinned around with her whip in a tornado, going though the ground whipping them before she stopped in the middle and put her hands on the ground, making her do a handstand before she twirled around, starting to kick them with her legs, knocking them away, while also moving her whip around getting those she missed. Lucy then pushed herself up and spinned before she thrusted her whip forward, snaring the last remainder of the group in it, and spun around before throwing them in the wall knocked out. Take that. Lucy winked giving a peace sign. That was impressive. Urza smirked holding up an axe. Nice going there Lucy. Naruto grinned giving a thumbs up. He, it was no big deal really. Lucy chuckled blushing a bit while scratching her cheek with her finger. I think I totally scored some points with them. That's what you were going for. Happy sighed shaking his head. However this crab spirit of yours, the way he calls you baby, I find it rather insulting. Urza stated. Point son scored. Lucy whined dunking her head. Whoa, bah I mean ma'am. Cancer said sweat dropping. Now Urza I think that's just how he is. Naruto chuckled. Thanks Naruto. Lucy smiled. Yes, thank you sir. Cancer thanked. There's still so many. Urza muttered looking at the still large amount of Eisenwald. I thought we'd taken care of most of them. Yeah these guys are like cockroaches. You take care of some of them and more just pop out. Naruto said before grinning. How's about we wipe them all out Urza? An excellent idea Naruto. Urza grinned back. A magic seal appeared around Urza and her armor vanished before a new armor appeared on her. Almost every part of this armor is seemingly made of silver metal. The upper part of her armor only consists of a small breastplate that is composed of feather-shaped plates pointing upwards with a large metal flower on the front, which extends along her hips, showing the upper part of her chest and stomach. Her biceps are covered by metal straps, and her very large plated gauntlets sport feather-shaped plates at the edges. Her waist is circled by large, decorated plates reminiscent of feathers that lie on a long white skirt that stopped at her calves, a pair of plated boots which is partially hidden under her skirt, each heel sport metal ornaments shaped like wings. She also wears a neck guard made of feather-like plates and a tiara around her head with prominent metal wings. The armor also sports two pairs of large metal wings which adorn her as back, composed of metal feathers which get longer and larger at the edges. In her hands were two one-handed swords that has a blue embellishments on the blade with feather-shaped handguards. Heaven's wheel armor. The rainbow seal appeared around Naruto, and his cloak vanished before a skin-tight red and yellow armor appeared on him with a dagger-like sword in his right hand and a rainbow aura over his body. Black Luster Soldier's armor except it's red and yellow with his sword and without the helmet. Rago's cosmic armor. Oh wow. Lucy gushed in amazement of the armor Urza and Naruto were wearing as they floated in the air. Dance my swords. Urza shouted as swords appeared around her and started to spin. Blaze power of the galaxy. Naruto shouted raising his sword as a rainbow flame powered it. I knew it. It has to be them. The fat spiky haired man shouted. Circle sword. Cosmic slash. Urza waved her swords around making the ones around her waist circled and slash around and Naruto slashed his sword down, firing a storm of rainbow energy. Both attacks nailed the Eisenwald members knocking them around as they fell unconscious from the pain, leaving the green spiky haired fat man and one more member. W wo. They took them all down in one swipe. Lucy breathed. Alright then the one member growled raising his fists up glowing. It was a man having flat going upward black hair and eyes wearing a zipped up brownish jackets with a large collar over a black shirt, blue pants, and black shoes. I'll be your opponent. He roared charging at them. Don't do it Bayard. Do you have any idea who that man and woman are the fat man shouted. Naruto and Urza swiped their sword slashing at Bayard as he flew by them and fell down on the ground defeated. The queen of the fairies, Titania Urza, and the lost king of the fairies, Abara Naruto. The fat man said in fear backing up as Urza and Naruto turned back into their armor cloak. Wow. Those two are amazing. Lucy smiled. Forget this. I'm out of here. The fat man shouted running away. He's probably going after Eriger. Naruto frowned. I would imagine so. Urza nodded in agreement before turning to Lucy. I want you to go after him. Me? Lucy asked pointing at herself. Just do it. Urza ordered. Whatever you say. Lucy shouted in fear and grabbed Happy running away. When they were gone Urza fell down on her knees while Naruto kneeled down beside her and leaned her against him. I guess I overdid it on the magic car. Urza huffed. You always were pushing yourself too hard on things. Naruto smiled softly. You know that's the part you love about me. Urza laughed softly. True. Naruto chuckled. They both sat in silence one waiting for the other to catch her breath. You know you still owe me. Urza said suddenly. Owe you what? Naruto asked confused. You know before you left after what happened you said we would Urza smirked. Oh that Naruto blushed averting his eyes. MMHMM. Urza giggled. Shut up. Naruto scowled. 
Aw, I made you embarrassed. Urza teased. You never change. Naruto sighed smiling. Not when it comes to you. Urza grinned closing her eyes and leaning closer to Naruto. Ha. Hey. Naruto chuckled hugging her closer. With Natsu and Grey, the two were running down the hall looking for their target. Eriger. I can't believe Naruto and Urza wanted us to work together. Just what were they thinking? Grey wondered. Obviously so little. I mean just cause we worked together in the past doesn't mean we like it. Everyone knows fire and ice don't mix. Natsu said. But Naruto did say we were a force to be reckoned with when we work together. Grey said. And Nai-san is usually right about these kind of things. Natsu said. Even though, yeah, I could take Eriger by myself. They both shouted glaring at each other. Are you copying me? They both stopped once they noticed a fork at the end of the hall. Which way do we go? Natsu asked. Yes we'll have to split up. Grey answered. They both turned to their own hallway. Remember Natsu, we're going up against an evil freak who wants to unleash a deadly spell. Grey turned to Natsu and raised his fist smirking. If you find him give him a good thrashing. You don't have to worry about that. Natsu grinned raising his fist. I got a bone to pick for him messing with fairy tail. I'll take on anyone who messes with us. Grey and Natsu grinned at each other before realizing they were being nice to one another and they quickly turned their heads away from each other, crossing their arms. Don't die on me. Grey said under his breath. Hmm? Natsu turned to Grey raising his eyebrow. Nothing. Later loser. Grey said taking off with Natsu looking at him before he took off too in the other direction. If Eriger's going to play lullaby through the speaker system, then I need to head to the broadcast studio. Grey said making his way towards it following the signs. When he made it to the room he kicked the door open and walked in to confront Eriger, but saw nobody in it. There's no one here. Maybe I- Suddenly his instincts flared up making him dodge roll out the way as Black Ribbon struck where he was standing at, when Grey looked up, he saw Rael lowering himself down with his other hand, as he used the ribbons to keep himself on the ceiling. That was a pretty good guess. But our plan isn't as obvious as you think. Rael grinned. So why don't you tell me what the plan is, and you won't get hurt pal. Grey smirked. Grey and Rael just grinned at each other preparing for the fight. But Naruto and Urza, after getting her energy back thanks to Naruto, he and Urza made their way to the balcony, where a crowd of people were there wondering what was going on. As they made it to the balcony Urza snatched a microphone from a police officer. If you value your lives you will leave this place at once. Urza said into the microphone. This station has been taken over by evil wizards. They are threatening to broadcast a deadly spell over the loudspeakers that would kill everyone here. We beg you people to run as far away as you can. Naruto added in. The crowd stood in shock for a moment before everyone turned and bolted away from the train station. Each one of them trying to get as far away as possible so they wouldn't die. Hey you two why would you make everyone panic like that? An officer demanded. We've rather done that let all these innocent people die. Naruto said as they turned to him. In fact you gentlemen should leave this place as well. Urza said. The officers looked at one another before they left the area leaving Naruto and Urza on the balcony. We managed to clear the people out of here. Naruto said crossing his arms. Wonder what Eriger's next move is. Urza wondered placing her hand on her hip. Just then they both heard a whirling sound behind them making them turn around and were shocked to see a massive wall of powerful wind towering around the station. It's some kind of wind barrier. Urza said. Haha. <laughs> Naruto turned around and saw Eriger floating behind him grinning evilly at them making him scowl. Back with Grey. Grey backflipped out the way as Rayle attacked him with his bands he then dodged to the left before rolling forward before riding himself and punched his enemy in the face, knocking him down skidding across the floor. I'll show you. Rayle growled before swiping his hands, making the band shot out rushing at Grey like a whip. You won't escape my wrath. HMPH. Grey smirked before slamming his right fist in his left open hand as mist came out around him before a blue magic seal appeared. Ice make. Shield. Grey spread his arms apart, an ice flower shield appeared blocking Rail's attacks. This punk uses ice mage. Rail growled pulling his bands back. Ice make. Knuckle. Grey slammed his hands together before swiping his right hand away before ice fists came out the ground and uppercutted Rail in the air and he then crashed into the wall breaking it going into another room. This is your last chance to tell me what you guys are planning. If you're not going to use the lullaby on the paw system, then what is the plan? Grey demanded walking in the other room as Rael sat up wiping blood from his mouth. Eriger's magic ceiling barrier should be up by now. Rael grinned. Eriger's what? Grey asked. He's created a wind barrier to keep you insects from escaping. Rael chuckled making Grey glared at him. But Naruto and Urza, I always wanted to fight against the queen of the fairies. Eriger smirked looking at Urza before looking at Naruto. And it's such an honor to meet the long lost king of the fairies as well. Sadly I don't have time for either you. Eriger waved his hand firing wind pushing Urza, and Naruto passed the wind wall into the station separating him and them. 
Berger. Urza roared rushing to the wind wall. Urza don't. Naruto shouted. Urza slammed her right arm into the wall to try and break free, only to get wind slashes on it and pushed her back, but Naruto caught her. It's useless. There's no way you'd be able to get through my magic ceiling barrier. Aragor smirked. It's one way only, if you try to escape the wind will tear you to shreds. What do you plan to accomplish by doing all this? Naruto yelled. Just what are you after? Urza demanded. We've wasted enough of our time with you fairy tale flies. Now if you'll excuse me Aragor flew away leaving them. Come back here. Curse you Aragor. Urza shouted holding her arm. So he wasn't targeting the station, then what is his plan? Naruto frowned. With Grey, Grey slammed Rayul into the wall grabbing into the collar of his jacket. Why don't I get straight to the point, tell me what the plan is or else. Grey growled. We knew you pests would cause problems, so we lured you here to trap you. Rayul smirked. The only reason we took this station was to block traffic to the final stop. We didn't want any trains getting to Clover Station. Why? Grey asked. Cause that's where it's going down. Clover is just beyond this giant canyon, and this train line is the only way in and out of town. Unless you can fly like Aragor. So lullabies in Clover. You know what else is in Clover? Think hard and you'll get it. Grey narrowed his eyes before jumping back as Rayul swiped his hand whipping his bands out to hit Grey. Clover, that's where the conference is being held. Son of a bitch, this was their plan all along. They're targeting the guildmaster. Grey growled landing on his feet. Ha ha ha. You finally figured it out huh? Well it's too late to stop us now. Rayul thrusted his arms forward whipping his bands out to Grey, but he caught them with his hands. The Eisenwald thugs must be pretty brave to take on an entire group of guildmaster wizards. Grey said. Ha. Those old fossils won't know what hit em once lullaby song is playing. There's no way Erger's plan will fail. Rayul smirked smugly. You and your fairy friends are stuck in this station and there's nothing you can do about it. Soon we'll have our revenge on anyone who tried to keep us down. When we're done they'll be completely wiped out. He taunted. Heh, that's not gonna happen. Grey smirked using his magic to freeze the bands going all the way to his fingertips before twisting his wrists shattering them. We'll stop you thugs before that happens because we have some of the strongest wizard to foil your plans. Grey then jumped forward and slammed his hand on Rail's face, griping it before he froze him in a block of ice and took his hand away. Heh, wasn't even a challenge for me. Grey turned around and walked off. I better tell Urza and Naruto about this. But Natsu, Natsu was running through the halls trying to find Aragor, but he was having no such luck. Man, where the hell is Aragor? I've been searching for a while now, but I keep coming up short. Natsu said looking in another room, but didn't see the person he was looking for and went on to the next room. There shouldn't be that many places to hide. While Natsu was looking he didn't see the shadow following him as a head poked out showing it was Kajayama. I got you now fairy tale fly. Kajayama smirked. But Naruto and Urza. Naruto just got done tying up all the Eisenwald members as Urza was interrogating Bayard, trying to get him to tell how to get out of Aragor's wind barrier. Forget it lady, there's no undoing Aragor's barrier. You and your friends are stuck here. Bayard smirked making Urza and Naruto scowl. Naruto. Urza. They both looked up to see Grey on the upper floor. Grey? Naruto said confused. What are you doing? I thought you were with Natsu. Urza said. We decided to split up. But never mind that, I know what Eisenwald's real target is, it's Clover the next town up. Grey said. What? Urza said. Why would Clover be their real target? What could possibly Naruto said before his eyes widen in shock? Don't tell me. Yeah. Aragor's target is the guildmasters. He plans to kill them with lullaby. Grey shouted. What? Urza exclaimed before looking at Bayard with a evil look. Why didn't you tell me? She demanded before punching Bayard to the ground as she stood up. That's just great. Aragor is targeting the guildmaster and we're stuck here in this wind barrier. Yeah and trying to go through it will make mince meat out of you. Grey said as he jumped down to them. We know, Urza tried to get through it only to hurt her arm which I healed. Not the smartest thing she's done. Naruto jabbing his thumb at Urza who glared at him, but he ignored it. So how do we get through it? Grey asked. No idea. Naruto sighed crossing his arms. There has to be a way. Urza muttered bringing her fingers to her chin in thought. She then remembered something. Wait a minute I remember them saying someone breaking the seal on lullaby. Wasn't it that Kajayama guy that Natsu saw with lullaby? Maybe he was the one who broke the seal, and if so we can get him to dispel the wind barrier. Naruto said. The seal breaking wizard, huh? Perfect. Grey said. Then if we know what to do let's move. Naruto said with Urza and Grey nodding in agreement before all three took off. Karaka, how long are you going to hide? Bayard asked looking at his wall. A yellow magic seal appeared on the wall before the spiky green haired fat man's upper body came out. I'm sorry, but I was scared. Karaka said. I need you to find Kajayama before they do. Bayard said. 
I can't you know I'm no good in a fight. Karaka whimpered. Calm down. It's a simple job, even you can do it. Bayard said making Karaka sweat. But Lucy and Happy sigh this is hopeless. We've been looking for God knows long long. Lucy whined. Her fat man he sure was quick at running away. Happy said. Tell me about it. Lucy sighed. Maybe we should head back. Asp. Happy gasped getting Lucy's attention. What's with the gasping? Lucy asked. Urza gave you a direct order and you're not going to follow it, that's dangerous Lucy. You have to do what she says or you get punished, and seeing her punish you will possibly scar me for life. Happy said shaking in fear. She would really do that Lucy freaked out in fear before smiling. Hey I was just kidding let's keep looking. The thought of Urza beat down knocks some sense into you. Happy deadpanned. Oh shut it you stupid cat. Lucy growled before she thought of something. Wait a sec would Naruto even allow that to happen? It seems like to me he can calm Urza down. Yeah Naruto can do. Guess I forgot he's the only that doesn't suffer Urza's wrath. Happy putting his hand on his chin. You remember that now you dumb cat Lucy shrieked before calming down. Anyway let's keep looking for that fat guy. Aye. Happy agreed. With Natsu, Natsu was still looking for Eriger but kept coming up short and it was starting to get on his nerves. Where are you Eriger? Natsu growled. I know you're here somewhere. This guy doesn't pose much of a threat now that Eriger's gone. Now to get some payback. Kajayama grinned coming up behind Natsu. Natsu felt someone behind him and turned around bringing his arms up, blocking shadow fists that sprouted from Kajayama's shadow, making him skid back. You again? Natsu frowned. Hello there fairy tale insect. It's time I paid you back for what happened on the train. Kajayama smirked. I don't have time for you. Where's Eriger? Natsu demanded bringing his arms down. Ha. Ah. The only way you're going to get the answer is if you beat it out of me. Kajayama stated. Fine then if that's how you wanted. Natsu said rolling his shoulders before crouching down. Knuckle shadow. Kajayama spread his arms out as multiple shadow fists came towards Natsu who jumped back. Hold still. Kajayama shouted having more shadow fists come at Natsu, but he get on dodging them. Alright then, snake shadow. He kneeled down and put his left hand on the ground as multiple shadows with snake heads came out and rushed at Natsu. Huh, not bad. Natsu said. Ha ha. These things will follow you till the ends of the world. Kajayama laughed. We'll see about that. Natsu smirked slamming his fists together as fire surrounded his forearms before he jumped towards Kajayama. Fire Dragon's wing attack. He spread his arms wide and fired the flames from his arms, destroying Kajayama's attack. Aichi destroyed my attack with one blow. Kajayama stuttered backing up. Now to make you start talking. Natsu smirked raising his fist as it was encased in flames. Why why you're a monster? Kajayama said. No, I'm a fairy tale wizard. Natsu charged and nailed Kajayama blasting him though the wall into another one as he fell down to the ground. Didn't think fairy tale wizards like this were that strong. Kajayama groaned. Now that I beat you, tell where Eriger is. Natsu demanded. He's long gone by now. Kajayama chuckled. What? Natsu asked. Natsu? Natsu turned to see Urza, Naruto, and Grey running towards him. Don't touch Kajayama. We need him. Urza said. Huh? Natsu hummed in confusion. Urza then took out a sword and slashed it into the wall next to Kajayama's head scaring him. You will dispel the wind barrier and you will do so without complaint. Urza demanded. I'd do it if I were you man. Naruto said crossing his arms. F fine I'll dispel it. Kajayama stuttered. Suddenly Kajayama went all stiff before he choked out blood as a hand phased out of his chest, surprising everyone. Why Karaka? Kajayama groaned before he fell down on the ground and revealed Karaka behind him phased through a wall with his hand out shaking by what he'd done. It's a simple job, even you can do it. You have to kill Kajayama. Karaka remembered Bayard's words. Kajayama. Urza shouted kneeling next to him to check on his. Don't you dare die on us. We need your help to dispel the barrier. We're losing him Urza. Gray stated kneeling on the other side. We can't lose him. He's the only one to dispel the wind barrier, he has to hang on. Urza said. How could you do that to one of your own members? Natsu growled before fire erupted from him. He's a member of your own guild and you tried to kill him. How could you? Natsu leaped to Karaka who phased back into the wall, but Natsu punched through it to get to him and socked him in the face, knocking him out. Is that how you dark guild members treat each other? Looks like a Tauto chan still doesn't accept when guild members turn on one another. Naruto humped turning his head away. When the situation calls for it guild members will always turn on each other. He thought bitterly. Naruto's sudden mood was not missed by Urza. Um, did we come at a bad time? Lucy asked as she and Happy came to the scene they were seeing. On a track leading to Clover Town. I'm so close to Clover and the guild masters I can almost taste it. Aragor said walking down the train tracks leading to Clover Town. 
And what's more the magic energy I used creating that wind barrier is almost fully recharged. He chuckled as he began to float. You old fools not only took our work you robbed us of our rights. And now you shall pay. The reaper's punishment is here. Erger shouted as he flew off to his destination. Ashahana Station. The gang was on the floor near the balcony trying to figure a way out of their situation. So Erger wants to use lullaby on the guildmasters. Lucy asked. We have to stop him. Natsu said slamming his fist in his hand. That's easier said than done. Erger cut off our only means of reaching Clover and he's heading there by air. Urza said as she finished bandaging up Kajayama. We can catch up to him on the magic car. But we can't do anything till we can figure out a way past this barrier. Gray said. How are we supposed to do that? Lucy wondered. Naruto you think you can? Urza asked. I would have to get very close to the wind barrier, but I would be getting shredded while doing it. Naruto answered. Then we'll just have to find another way. Only by putting our heads together will be the key to getting us out of here. Urza sighed. P. Happy said tilting his head before he eyes widened. That's it. He shouted getting everyone's attention. Lucy I just remembered something I was supposed to give you. What? Lucy asked. This. Happy said pulling out a familiar golden key. How did you get your paws on Virgo's key? Lucy shouted before pulling Happy's cheeks. Didn't anyone ever tell you stealing is wrong? But I didn't steal it. Virgo wanted me to give it to you. Happy whined. She did. Lucy said letting go of Happy. Come on guys we're wasting our time with this nonsense. Gray huffed crossing his arms. Virgo. Natsu muttered placing his hands on his hips in thought. Wasn't she that big gorilla looking maid we fought? Yeah. Apparently her contract with Everloo was broken when he was arrested. And when we left she told me she wanted to sign a contract with you Lucy. Happy said waving the key. Great I get a big ugly spirit. Lucy sighed. Anyway thanks for letting me know, but I'll have to deal with her later. In case you haven't noticed we need to find a way out of here. But Happy said only for Lucy to grab his cheeks again only this time harder. Shut up. Why can't you just meow like every other cat? Lucy shouted. Hold on Lucy, Happy's on to something. Naruto said getting her attention. How? Lucy asked. Virgo can dig holes. She could make one for us by digging through the ground and out of the wind barrier. Naruto said. She can? Urza asked surprised. Seriously? Gray asked stunned. Oh yeah she can. Natsu said remembering that. Be right. Lucy exclaimed before hugging Happy. Oh Happy why didn't you say something earlier you silly kitty. Cause someone was pulling my his cheeks. Happy and Naruto deadpan making Lucy chuckle nervously. He, sorry. Lucy apologized. Um, can I have that key now? Here. Happy huffed tossing to Lucy. Being mean to me and pinching my cheeks. Don't worry Happy, later on I'll give you some fish for Lucy being mean. Naruto chuckled. I air. Happy smiled saluting. Lucy stood a few feet away from the group preparing to summon Virgo. I call upon thee. In the world of the celestial spirits. Lucy chanted pointing her key forward as magic energy flowed through her. And now I beckon you to my side at once. Pass through the gate. Open. Gate of the maiden. Virgo. Lucy declared swiping her key down as a blue magic seal appeared in front of her when suddenly something shot out of it, showing a girl having pink hair that went to her shoulders with blue eyes, wearing a typical maid outfit consisting of a black undercoat, framed against her D-cup breasts with a white frilled trim apron over it, shackles with chains on her wrists, white socks that stopped at her thighs, and black shoes. Huh? She asked in a stunned tone. You summon mistress. What can I do for you? Virgo asked bowing. Who are you? Lucy asked still stunned. Wow Virgo, you lost some weight. Natsu said looking her over. Hello there. I apologize for the trouble I caused you last time. Virgo said. She didn't just lose weight Natsu. Lucy shouted. What do you mean? Gray asked. She's like a totally different person. Lucy yelled. And a very loyal spirit who will do anything to please her wizard. Virgo said looking at Lucy. So I take on whatever form my wizard finds most appealing. You looked a lot more intimidating in your other form. Natsu said. Really? Virgo asked before changing her form into an extremely tall and overweighted girl with a brutish face and two ponytails. I can change to this form if you like. That made everyone cringe from the look. Don't listen to him. I'm your wizard and I like the other form better. Lucy wailed. As you wish mistress. Virgo said changing back making everyone sigh in relief. I gotta say it's nice to see you again Virgo. Naruto smiled getting her attention. When she saw him she smiled widely as tears came out of her eyes. Naruto-sama. Virgo exclaimed leaping at him and hugged him burying her head in the crook of his neck crying. I can't believe it's you. I thought I'd never see you again. I know Virgo, I know. Naruto soothed hugging her and rubbing her back to calm her down. Hold on you two know each other? Urza asked. Yes. Virgo sniffed before looking at everyone. 
Before Everloo Naruto-sama was my contractor. And he was the best one I had in forever. She smiled happily. If that's true then how did Everloo get your key? Natsu asked. This was even before I joined Fairy Tail. I was a wizard for hire doing any job I was asked to do with Virgo by my side when I got her from helping a village out. After one of my job me and Virgo were traveling by boat until a tsunami hit us and we lost each other. I was devastated that I would never see Virgo again. Naruto explained hugging her tighter as she held him just as tight. While I was looking for her I came across fairy tale and ran into Master Makarov, long story short I came a part of the guild while I continue my search for Virgo. I didn't know how or why, but I then felt she was okay through the bond we share and she told me not to worry that we'll see each other again someday. Pause I knew you were running yourself ragged looking for me. I couldn't bear the thought of you hurting yourself for my sake. Virgo said looking at him. But you were worth it. Naruto looking back at her. Not at the expense of your health I wasn't. Virgo countered looking defiantly. That's why I said for you to stop and live your life. Especially how you were when your father left. Naruto sighed knowing she had him there. I was on my way to get you when I heard a rumor about Everloo having a celestial spirit for a maid. Naruto said. It's okay now that we're together again. And it's good to see you after so long. Virgo smiled placing her hand against his face and rubbing it, making him purr a little. And I'm glad to see you. Naruto smiled closing his eyes. Oh, that's so sweet. Lucy gushed seeing the display of affection the two had for one another. HMPH. Grace smirked. He. Natsu chuckled. I'm glad to see you reunited with your long lost friend Naruto. Urza smiled. They look cute together. Happy laughed. Anyway, sorry to interrupt but we're on a time frame. Can we work out the contracts later? Lucy asked. Sure. Whatever you like mistress. Virgo said turning to Lucy. Do you really have to call me mistress? Lucy asked in despair. Would you prefer I call you queen? Virgo asked taking a glance at her whip. No. Lucy deadpanned. How about princess? Virgo asked. Oh yeah, that's more like it. Lucy smiled pleasantly putting a hand to her cheek. Naruto snorted trying to hold in his laughter. Princess. Yeah right. Grey deadpanned. Hurry it up ladies. Natsu also deadpanned. Yes, sir. Virgo said walking away from Naruto. Now then. She bowed before a magic seal appeared under her and she dove right underground. Wow. Look at her go. Grey exclaimed in astonishment. Nice work Lucy. Urza said as she hugged Lucy against her armored chest. Lucy grunted in pain, but she allowed Urza to continue. Alright, let's bust out of this joint. Grey said preparing to jump. He heard grunting and looked to the side to see Natsu holding Kajayama over his shoulder. What do you think you're doing? I know he's one of our enemies, but I'd feel guilty if we just left him here to die after he got stabbed in the back by his own teammate. Natsu said before looking at Naruto. Right Nai-san. Naruto just looked at Natsu before smiling and nodded his head, giving him a proud look for helping an enemy that was stabbed in the back. This was shared by Urza who also gave him a proud look. While this was going on Kajayama couldn't believe the person he fought was helping him. Eventually everyone made into the hole that Virgo made and was outside of the wind barrier. We made it. Gray said. We should hurry and head towards Clover. Urza said. Man. This wind is crazy. Lucy yelled shielding her face. Princess. I'll keep your panties from showing. Virgo said pulling down Lucy's flowing skirt. You just worry about your own. Lucy yelled seeing Virgo's skirt blow in the wind. Wow. Gray muttered seeing the show unfold with wide eyes before he was punched towards the ground with a lump on his head. I suggest you not look up Virgo's skirt Gray. Naruto said in a tone that promised pain with his fist steaming from the hit. I it's no use. You never be able to catch up to Eriger. Kajayama muttered laying on the ground as everyone looked at him. You can't stop us, we've won. Wait, where's Natsu? Urza asked not seeing him. Happy's not here either. Gray pointed out. Naruto's gone too. Lucy added in. Tracks leading to Clover Town. I can see the town up ahead. A little bit more and I'll have my revenge. Eriger smirked as he was approaching Clover Town. Not on our watch. You tell him. Eriger turned his head behind him and was shocked to see Happy flying towards him with angel wings coming from his back with Natsu holding on to him. Beside him was Naruto flying with rainbow energy coming out from his feet. What? Eriger exclaimed in shock. Take this. Naruto and Natsu either punched or kicked Eriger, knocking him down below into the train tracks as Naruto and Natsu landed with the ladder catching Happy as he was wiped out. I'm so tired. Can't fly Happy muttered in exhaustion. Don't worry buddy. We got this. Natsu said. Yeah, you just rest happy. Naruto said. You Eriger growled getting Naruto and Natsu's attention. You pesky fairy tail flies keep getting in our way. How did you get past my wind barrier? That's our little secret. Naruto said cracking his knuckles. But for now, we're going to take you out. Natsu said as flames appeared over his fists. Ha. 
You can't honestly believe you two can take me on. Aragra smirked arrogantly standing up. I'm Aragra the Reaper. I take down any fool who thinks they can take me. And obviously you don't know the power of Fairy Tales Oberon. Naruto smirked. And Fairy Tales Salamander. Natsu grinned. And by all means bring it on. Aragra challenged spinning his scythe around before holding it in his right hand. With Urza and the group, Urza was driving the magic car on the tracking trying to reach Naruto and Natsu, while Grey, Lucy, and Kajayama were inside. So why are you taking me with you? Kajayama asked. Because you obviously need a doctor. And since everyone left town you'll have to see one in Clover. Lucy said before turning her head away. Try and show some gratitude. I just don't understand, why are you helping me? We're enemies. Kajayama stated making Lucy frown before he realized what they were trying to do. Oh wait I get it, you're taking me hostage so you can strike a deal with Hiriagra. Well you can forget it. He would care less about me or any of his guildmates. Jeez, lighten up dude. Lucy said sweat dropping. If you want to die we can make it happen. Gray said. Jill Gray. Lucy said. There's more to this world than life and death you know. Gray said looking at Kajayama who looked back. You should try looking at the positives. You and your Eisenwald pals. Before anything else could be said the magic hair tilted making move around with Grey crashing into the window and Lucy to knock into Kajayama. Only by knocking into I mean her ass hit his face. What happened? Grey asked. It's okay, everything's fine. Urza said. I am so sorry. Lucy apologized to Kajayama who was holding his face. Could your ass be any bigger? Kajayama gripped. What? That sexual harassment. Lucy shouted in anger before looking at Grey and pointed to Kajayama. Kill him Grey. He said I had a big ass. You're not seriously to sit there and let him get away with it are you? Geez, talk about trying to have a serious moment. Gray sighed with a tick mark on his head. My vision is getting a little blurry. I guess all my magic energy wasn't fully recovered. Urza thought trying to keep a clear sight of the tracks. Naruto and Natsu are the only ones that can stop Eriger. She then smirked. What am I thinking? When those two fight together they're a force of nature that can't be stopped. Back with Naruto and Natsu. Naruto and Natsu were staring at Eriger who was staring back. So you were able to break through my wind barrier huh? You flies are so annoying. Eriger said before raising up his hand. I suggest you kids get out of my way or else. A purple magic seal appeared on his hand before wind shot out trying to push Naruto and Natsu off the tracks, but they weren't budging. Seeing this he put more power into it making an explosion of wind come around them. He thought he took care of them only to see Naruto and Natsu jump up with flames coming out of Natsu's feet with his hands in fire and Naruto having rainbow flames coming out of his feet with his hands in the same fire before they striked him with a double punch, but he blocked it with his side, but that was only a distraction as Natsu kneed him in the gut before Naruto punched him in the face. Impossible. So they use flames to jump and attack. Aragra thought as he flew in the air. He then smirked. I underestimated their powers. This might actually be a challenge. Be ready Natsu. Naruto warned. Nodded. Natsu nodded. Come on Aragor come down here and fight us like men. Heh, don't get to cocky you flies. Stormbringer. Aragor shouted waving his left hand as a tornado came out and flew towards them. Nice san Natsu said. I got this. Naruto smirked standing tall with Natsu getting behind him. What's he doing? Aragor muttered wondering why they were just standing there. He got his answer and what he saw shocked him. When the tornado hit them it just stood there before he heard inhaling and looked to see Naruto sucking up all the wind from the tornado in his mouth as it kept getting smaller and smaller till it was all gone. When Naruto was done he burped before wiping his mouth. Thanks for the meal there Eriger. Those winds of yours were quite delectable. Naruto grinned. H how in the world d did you do that Eriger exclaimed in shock. I'll leave that to your imagination. Naruto smirked. Natsu now. You got it nice san Natsu grinned. Naruto and Natsu took a deep breath and reared their heads back as a red and sky blue magic seal appeared in front of them. Fire dragons Natsu said. Sky dragons Naruto said. What the? Aragor shouted. Roar. Natsu fired a stream of flames out of his mouth while Naruto fired a stream of sky blue winds out his mouth. Storm wall. Aragor yelled thrusting his left hand out making a wind wall that blocked the two attacks, making an explosion that pushed him back a few feet. These two are quite powerful. He muttered. Let's go. Naruto said. Right. Natsu nodded. Naruto and Natsu charged at Eriger who flew towards them and engaged in battle. Eriger slashed at Natsu with his scythe, but Natsu jumped over it and striked at his head with a flaming kick, only for Eriger to block it with his right forearm and turned around kicking Natsu in the chest, knocking him down. Naruto punched him with a rainbow flaming right fist, but Eriger jumped over it and kicked at him with his left leg, luckily Naruto ducked under it and started breakdancing, while firing sky blue wind slashes from his body, nailing Eriger and throwing him down on his back. 
Eriger groaned in pain and got up only for him to be uppercutted in the gut by a flame fist courtesy of Natsu, before he twirled around and kicked him in the face, making him skid back across the tracks. Naruto then charged at him spinning forward and slammed his left foot down, but Eriger raised up his side and blocked it, but backflip landing on his hands, before he swung his legs down, tripping Eriger, and punched him in the gut. Getting tired of this Eriger waved his hand firing a barrage of tornadoes at Naruto and Natsu, knocking them in the air before they flipped and landed on their feet, but Eriger was right on top of them and slashed at them, while Naruto ducked Natsu blocked it with his arms earning a slash on them. Naruto and Natsu then leaped at Eriger with red flame and rainbow flame fists, while Eriger flew at them with wind around his arm, the three's attacks slammed into each other, and sparks flew around each one trying to overpower the other, till they cancelled each other out, and they all jumped back from each other. Okay enough of this. I have a schedule to keep so I'll end this. Eriger said flying up in the air and spinned his scythe around. Storm mail. Wind gathered around him before a hurricane surrounded his body. Now let's see you break through this you flies. Well since you asked. Natsu grinned slamming his fists together with fire surrounding them and leaped at Eriger. Natsu wait. Naruto shouted. Iron dragon's iron fist. Natsu slammed his fist into Eriger only for the fire to be snuffed out. What the? Natsu muttered. My wind and my storm mail blows outward, meaning it can extinguish any flame attack you throw at me. Eriger chuckled. Oh yeah. Natsu roared charging at Eriger again with his flaming fists blazing even more and tried to punch him, but his flames were always extinguished. Damn it. He growled pissed off before turning to his brother figure. Nice and do you think you can take it from here? Sure. And when I got him you can deliver the final blow. So be ready. Naruto smirked. You got it. Natsu grinned. Oh yeah then try my storm shred. Eriger thrusted his hand out and fired a barrage of wind slices at Naruto. Let's boogie. Naruto smirked running straight into the barrage and ran left and right dodging all the attacks. Haha. That's right run you little fly. That's all you can do. Eriger laughed firing more wind slices. Naruto skidded to a stop as rainbow flames covered his fists before he twirled around in a rainbow flaming tornado and deflected the wind slashes as they bounced off his tornado. Impressive, but your flames can't do a thing against my storm mail. Eriger said arrogantly. My flames aren't normal. Naruto jumped up at rainbow flames covered his feet and twirled before kicking Eriger in the face, knocking him down. Impossible. My wind snuff out any flames. Eriger shouted riding himself up. Like I said my flames aren't normal. And another thing. Naruto pulls his right hand back in a position looking like a strike with his claws as sky blue winds twirled around his hand. Sky dragon's crushing fang. Naruto swiped at Eriger's chest, dispersing some of his storm mail and leaving slash marks on his chest. Why you? Eriger growled and launched a massive wind tunnel at Naruto. Natsu now. Naruto said. You got it. Raya. Natsu roared blazing himself in fire as it grew larger and larger, as the wind was absorbed from the wind tunnel into his fire, making his smaller and smaller. What? How are you nullifying my attack? Eriger shouted. Easy. Your wind blows outward so I figured if I use my flame to suck in the wind, it would make my fire stronger. Natsu smirked. But normal fire wizards can't do that. Eriger exclaimed. Natsu isn't like other fire wizards. Naruto said smugly. And that's not all my flame is making smaller. Natsu said motioning his head to Eriger's body. Huh? Eriger looked down and noticed that his storm mail wind was being sucked into Natsu's fire as well. My storm mail. Yep. Now to show you what happens when you mess with fairy tail. Natsu charged at Eriger and headbutted him before raising his head up and the fire sword from his body engulfing Eriger. Fire dragon sword horn. It can't be. D dragon slayers really exist, Eriger thought in fear as he crashed down in the tracks defeated with lullaby rolling out of his pocket away from him. Hell yeah. Natsu shouted pumping his fist up. Way to go. Happy smile jumping up. Not a bad finish Natsu. I'm surprised you figured out a way through his storm mail. Naruto said impressed. Well thanks Nai-san. Natsu chuckled sheepishly rubbing the back of his head. After the lessons you gave me about thinking smarter, I try to do that as much as I can. Didn't Urza try to teach you the same thing? Naruto asked raising an eyebrow. No way. Urza's lesson were scary. She always gave me that look or was pointing a sword at me. Natsu shouted waving his arms. True. Urza's teaching methods were a bit over the top. Naruto said sweat dropping. Ha. That's putting it lightly. Natsu pouted crossing his arms. I can never understand how you are never afraid of her. It's cause Naruto is tough. Happy said. And she's not that scary you know. Naruto said. Easy for you to say. Natsu deadpanned. Naruto. Natsu. Hearing Lucy's voice they turned to see the magic car drive up to them before stopping as everyone got out of the vehicle. Yo Lucy. Naruto smiled. Hey you guys missed us kicking Eriger's ass. Natsu chuckled. I knew you could do it. Urza smiled. 
though it looks like Natsu got a scratch on him. I bet Naruto did all the work. Gray smirked seeing the slash marks on Natsu's forearms. Shut up. I'll have you know I figured out the way to beat Eriger. Natsu shouted. Yeah right. Gray scoffed. Actually Natsu did figure out how to beat Eriger. Naruto said. He's right. You should have seen the way Natsu's countered Eriger's wind. Happy said. I'm proud of you Natsu. And you Naruto cause I know you helped him. Urza said. No way. Eriger never loses. These guys are something else. Kajayama thought in shock before he saw Lullaby near Eriger. You two are really strong. I kinda wish I could be like that. Lucy giggled. Well you could Lucy. Through my training. Naruto smirked. Really? Lucy with her hands together hoping. Sure with my training you can become as strong as you are. Naruto nodded before looking at the others. Right guys. Got that right, with Nai-san's training you can become a powerhouse. Natsu grinned. Yeah, but his kind of training can send shivers down one's spine. Gray shivered from the phantom pains. That's for those who aren't used to training like that. Urza smiled proudly huffing out her chest. If I recall Urza even you couldn't handle my kind of training on the first day. Naruto smirked making her blush in embarrassment. Shut up. Urza demanded making Naruto chuckle. Why your training sounds like it could be a little too much for me. Lucy chuckled nervously. True, but the results are promising. Naruto assured. Anyway while we're here we should be on the way to the guild masters and let them know about the situation while also figuring what to do with the lullaby. Urza said. Yeah. I can't wait to see the look on Gramp's face when he sees Nai-san. Natsu chuckled. Same here. Grace smirked. I'm not. Naruto deadpanned. Don't worry Naruto, you know Makarov will be happy to see you. Happy said patting him on the leg. I guess. Naruto sighed. Just then the magic car jumped over the gang by Shadow Claws and they looked to see Kajayama was the one driving it with one of the Shadow Claws holding lullaby. Kajayama. Urza shouted. What the hell do you think you're doing? Gray yelled. Lullaby's mine now. Shouldn't have let your guard down flies. Kajayama smirked as he laughed evilly driving away. That asshole. Natsu shouted. This is how he repays us for saving his life Lucy screams. Instead of standing here shouting let's go after him. Naruto said taking off with the other following behind him. Clover Town. The sun was down, meaning it was nighttime as we see Kajayama walking through the forest after getting off of the magic car, making his way to the meeting building where the guild masters were. It took most of his magical energy, but it was worth it to accomplish his goal. This should do it. Kajayama panted in exhaustion as he saw the building down below. This should be enough for those old geezers to hear the lullaby from here. Time to play the tune. He smirked about to play it, but heard smooching sounds behind him, making him nearly jump out of his skin. There sure are some hot little numbers in this week's issue. Kajayama turned around to see a very short old man sitting on a rock cross-legged. He was bald only having white hair on the side and back of his head and a thick white mustache with black eyes wearing a orange hoodie that had light blue cuffs with a white shirt under it, having a black fairy tale stamp in the center, orange shorts, brown elf shoes, and an orange and light blue striped jester hat on his head. He was currently reading a magazine of Sorcerer Weekly that had a picture of hot-looking women on the cover and from what we guess hot women in the magazine. Wow. Young wizard girls are so much more powerful now than they were back in my day. And sexier too. He said perversely. Ah. Uh, Kajayama muttered. Ah. I don't have time for this. The old man exclaimed jumping off the rock and put the magazine behind his back. I need to catch up to those fools before they destroy an entire town. The old man began walking away before he felt someone behind him making him turn around to see Kageyama standing there making him freak out. It's not what it looks like. I was doing some research on female wizards. It was innocent. And I have no reason to be ashamed of it. The old man said defensively waving his arms in a panic motion. I don't care what you're doing. Kajayama sighed. You've been hurt badly boy. You shouldn't be wandering around the woods in your condition. The old man said looking him over. Yes sir. You're right. Kajayama said as the old man turned around sighing in relief. Hold on this old man is Makarov. The master of the fairy tale guild. Why do I keep running into these flies? He was brought out of his thoughts as he saw Makarov walking away. Um excuse me. Kajayama said getting Makarov's attention as he held up lullaby up with his hands. I don't suppose you'd like to hear a song? They wouldn't let me play my flute at the hospital. It would mean a lot to play for someone again. That's one creepy looking flute you got there. Makarov said looking at it. I know but it has a beautiful sound. Kajayama said. Um, well I should be going, but I guess one song couldn't hurt. Makarov said. Oh thank you. Kajayama smiled closing his eyes. I got him. He thought evilly. Be sure to listen to it carefully, okay sir. Yeah yeah. Makarov said. Kajayama brought lullaby to his lips about to play it till flashes started going off in his head. Who would want to join a legal guild anyway? They suck. 
Rayul said. Those fairy tale guys are too weak to be talking a big talk. Byard said. The lullaby song will be our revenge against those that strip us of our rights and force us to live in the darkness. Aragor said. Killing innocent people isn't going to get your right back. Lucy said. You should try looking for the positive. You and your buddies. Gray said. Hajayama. We really need your help right now. Urza said. He's a member of your guild. He trusted you and you tried to kill him. Natsu said. Remembering all that made Kajayama hesitate. While that was going on the gang stopped seeing Kajayama with Makarov. There he is. Gray said. Ramps. Natsu said. We have to hurry. Urza said. Right. Lucy said. I. Happy said. While they were going to help Makarov, no one noticed Naruto pulled the hoodie over his head shadowing his face, still unsure about how Makarov will react to seeing him again after three years. SHH. Everyone turned to see a bald elderly man behind them with black eyes that were currently closed. He had red lipstick and blush on each cheek wearing a purple spaghetti strap shirt with small white wings from his back, a gold and fuchsia hoop necklace around his neck, purple shorts, and red heels. His sudden appearance freaked out Grey, Natsu, and Lucy. We're just about to get to the good part. He then looked at Grey and Natsu before putting his hand on his cheek. Well aren't you boys yummy. So adorable. He swooned making Grey and Natsu freak out more. Who the hell is that guy? Lucy asked standing behind Urza as the old man scooted closer to Grey and Natsu. Master Bob. Urza answered sweat dropping. From the Blue Pegasus Guild. Naruto added in crossing his arms. Urza honey you really filled out. Bob said turning his attention to Urza. That weirdo is the master of the Blue Pegasus Guild. Lucy said disturbed. Unfortunately. Naruto sighed. Well I can't wait all night young man. Makarov said a little impatiently. Hajayama nodded bringing lullaby to his lips. Oh no. Urza said. Could you guys keep it down over there? Naruto, Urza, and Lucy looked to see a man having light brown hair that went to his shoulders, that had a black witch's hat, that had a red band with white spikes around the base on his head with black eyes that were covered by a pair of sunglasses, wearing a dark blue t-shirt with an identical collar around his neck that looked like the one on his hat, black pants, and dark blue shoes leaning against the tree smirking. We're just about to get to the good part. He's from Quattro Cerberus. Lucy recognizing him in the paper. That's their master gold mine. Urza said. Well? Makarov pressured wanting to get along with this. I can do this. I just have to play one song and it will change everything. Kajayama thought. Nothing's going to change. Makarov said getting Kajayama attention. You cannot change the fact that those are weak who will remain weak. Makarov said turning away from Kajayama. Now maybe it's just me, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean we humans are weak creatures by nature. Our insecurities are the reason why guilds exist. And they're why we have friends. He then turned around and looked back at Kajayama. When we're surrounded by allies it's easier to stay positive about the future. Think of it this way. If we're clumsy then we may stumble and bump into things, but as long as we have faith in our future we continue marching forward. Our inner strength emerges on its own. But we have to choose that path and pledge to live our lives to the fullest. Don't let that silly flute get in the way. Makarov smiled. Moved by his words Kajayama fell to his knees and dropped lullaby. I surrender. Kajayama said in defeat. Master? Urza smiled running to him with the gang following behind her, while Naruto, Bob, and Goldmine stayed. You stopped him. Natsu laughed. Alright. Lucy smiled. Way to go Gramps. Gray laughed. How did you kids end up in Clover? Makarov asked. Master Makarov, your words touched me so deeply I was almost moved to tears. Urza said slamming Makarov in her chest making him shout in pain. You sure know how to talk your way Gramps. Natsu smiled patting Makarov on the head. Watch it boy. Makarov warned. Very moving speech. Lucy smiled. I. Happy agreed. Not bad Gramps, not bad. Gray smirked crossing his arms. Told you it was going to be good. Goldmine smirked walking towards them. You said it. Bob smiled putting his hand against his face following behind. Oh by the way. You'll never guess who came back to the guild Gramps. Natsu smiled big. Who? Makarov wondered. Urza, Natsu, Happy, and Grey looked to the side, making Makarov do the same to see Naruto standing there with his head down. Naruto my boy? Makarov asked surprised. Hello master. Naruto muttered. Did he say Naruto? Little Naruto. Bob asked. Yeah, that's the name of their Abaron the one who left three years ago for unknown reasons. Goldmine said. That made Urza, Natsu, Happy, and Grey frown remembering that day, while Lucy was confused. So you've returned to fairy tale. Makarov said walking up to him. I have. Naruto nodded. Makarov stopped a few feet in front of him, while Naruto still had his head down. Neither one said a thing and it was starting to worry a few. I'm sorry about that day my boy. Had I been there you wouldn't have left like you did. Makarov sighed. 
That's not your fault, master. I was always dealt with a bad hand. Naruto said evenly. Do you still hate your guildmates? Makarov asked. He didn't get an answer as Naruto said nothing. Don't let those who have wronged you come between those in the guild you still have a bond with. Do you still have people you care about in fairy tale? Naruto thought about as flashes of people he still held dear appeared in his mind, making him smile softly. I guess I still do. Naruto said. Then you will always have a home in fairy tale Naruto. Makarov smiled patting him on the leg. I can feel you still haven't forgiven them, heck even Gildert's hasn't, and you know how he hold a grudge. But give it time. And I promise you you'll feel like fairy tale is still your family. After all I made you a promise that life with fairy tale would be an endless adventure of life and fun, didn't I? Yeah you did master. Naruto laughed softly and bended down, giving Makarov a grandfatherly hug as he hugged him back. I'm glad to see you again grandpa. Just like I'm glad to see you again too my grandson. Makarov smiled. They then separated smiling at one another. Now that's just sweet. Bob smiled. I agree. Goldmine chuckled. I'm glad Naruto doesn't hold what happened to everyone. Urza smiled. Yeah. Natsu agreed. Got that right. Gray added in. I. Happy grinned. Just what happened? Lucy wondered. By the way, why do you have your hood up? Makarov asked. I wasn't so sure how you would react seeing my so I hid my face. Naruto chuckled rubbing the back of his head. Well you don't have to worry about that my boy. Now let me see your face. Makarov smiled. Okay. Naruto chuckled pulling his hood down. Well I'll be, it seems you've gotten more handsome since the last time I saw you. Makarov chuckled. Oh Naruto. You really are more delicious than you were back then. Bob swooned. I'm not that good looking. Naruto sweat dropping. Oh he's just being modest. Makarov snickered patting his shoulder. Why you should have seen him back in the day he was getting all the pretty young girl's attention. I was actually quite jealous. Really now? What's your secret? Goldmine smirked. I don't have a secret. Naruto denied. L.I.A.R. Makarov, Goldmine, and Grey sang making Naruto's eye twitch with Urza, Lucy, Natsu, and Happy laughing. I've grown tired of you wizards and your disgusting antics. A evil male voice boomed from the lullaby flute, shocking everyone as purple smoke came from it and spiraled around in the air, with a purple magic seal appearing way above them. I can no longer hold back. I shall come forth and devour you all myself. The flute flew into the seal and sprouted out monstrous wooden legs, a torso with a chest and back with roots coming out it, arms with claws, and a demonic head that three dark eyes with glowing purple pupils, giving it an evil look as it looked down on everyone. Now which one of you likes to die? It's so big. Lucy shouted. No duh. Happy exclaimed. What the hell is that thing? Aragorn never said anything about a monster. Kajayama yelled. We're in a pickle. Bob said. It must be a demon from Zareph. Goldmine said. Why did the flute turn into a monster? Lucy asked. That's what Lullaby's true form looks like. It's forbidden black magic, living magic. Zara specialty. Goldmine said. Living magic? Urza asked. Who Zareph? Wasn't he some sort of ancient wizard? Gray wondered. He's the most evil wizard ever known. He was very powerful in his day. But in my wildest dream I never thought his dark legacy would pop back up again. Bob said. Now then, which of these souls should I eat first? Lullaby asked smirking demonically. Natsu? Gray. Get ready. Urza said. Got it. Natsu said. Right. Gray said. Now hold on there you three. Makarov said getting their attention. I think we should let Naruto here take on that demon. He gestured his thumb to Naruto. You sure? Naruto asked looking at Makarov. Of course I do my boy. Makarov nodded. All right then. Naruto said standing up and walked towards Lullaby. You plan to take me on all by yourself? Lullaby mocked. Time to cut loose. Naruto smirked before he leaped at Lullaby and kicked him in the face knocking him down and away from everyone else. Amazing. He was able to knock it down with one kick. That wizard is strong. The other guild master commented from Naruto's strength. Oh wow. That was incredible. Lucy breathed. Nai-san is just getting started. Natsu smirked. You little insect. Lullaby roared getting up and swiping his right fist at Naruto, but he jumped up on his arm and ran up against it. Oh yeah. Take this. Naruto shouted as rainbow flames covered his right fist. King Cosmic Dragon's iron fist. He slammed his fist into Lullaby's face, making him stumble back from the force as Naruto leaped back in the air and reared his head back as a rainbow magic seal appeared in front of him. King Cosmic Dragon's roar. Thrusting his head forward Naruto fired a large rainbow beam from his mouth that struck Lullaby making an explosion. Dragon. Wait Naruto can use Dragon Slayer magic too. Lucy asked looking at the group. Not just any Dragon Slayer magic. Gray smirked. Naruto can use Dragon Slayer magic taught by the true king of dragons, Bahamut. Urza smiled proudly. The Bahamut that rules over all dragons Lucy asked stunned. 
But wait what was that cosmic thing he's using? The one that looks like a rainbow? That was what Bahamut was famous for. It said that the cosmic element is the elements of all of the world combined into one. Happy said. All the elements. Lucy asked before figuring something out. Wait. Does that mean? Yep. Naruto can use all the elements dragon slayers are known for. Quite impressive no. Makarov smirked. No doubt. Lucy nodded. Taste my power. Lullaby thrusted his head forward firing a white beam of energy at Naruto who rolled out the way as the beam destroyed trees, setting them ablaze. Stand still you little human. Lullaby demanded punching where Naruto would be, but he kept dodging by leaping left and right. In Cosmic Dragon's Blade Barrage. Naruto swiped his arms apart, firing a barrage of rainbow energy slashes that cut it up Lullaby's body. Bra. I'll show you. Lullaby raising his foot and stomped on Naruto making him smirk. Ha. That'll teach ya. However it was cut short as his legs started to move before it was lifted up off the ground, and he was shocked to see Naruto standing there holding his foot up with his hand, and he didn't even look like he was struggling. Impossible. Whoa. Did you see that? He can hold that monster's foot with one hand. How strong is he? You're soaking up the praise aren't you? Goldmine smirked at Makarov. Why yes I am. Makarov laughed. Time to do some real damage. Naruto pushed Lullaby's foot off him making him stumble back as Naruto crossed his arms. King Cosmic Dragon's Kaioken. He thrusted his arms to the sides as his body bursted with rainbow flames outlining his body. Here I come. Naruto vanished before he appeared right in front of Lullaby and started barraging his body with punches and kick that left dents in his body, Lullaby was trying to smash his or smack him off, but Naruto was too fast always blocked or dodging the attack before they could hit. Naruto then came to Lullaby's face and punched him right between his three eyes, making Lullaby roar out in pain, before Naruto barraged his face with punches, making the tree-like demon stumble back from the force before turned around and swift kicked him to the forest, knocking him down. This guy's power is amazing. I never seen anything like it. Kajayama shouted. What is that all the big bad lullaby can do? Naruto mocked. I have had enough of you. Lullaby roared getting up as his screeches were hears all throughout the area. My ears. Lucy shouted as she and everyone else covered their ears. Damn that's loud. Gray shouted. And annoying. Natsu griped. No doubt. Happy agreed. It's preparing its deadly song. Urza yelled. Now you fools will die. Lullaby shouted about to play his tune only for it to come out boldy like faint whispers. What the? Lucy said. No happened. Happy said. What's going on? Why can't I play my melody of death? Lullaby wondered. It's cause of those holes I put in your body pal. Naruto grinned waving his finger. Thanks to all my attack I made some holes that made it difficult for you to play your little song. All that build up for this. Talk about a letdown. Lucy said shaking her head. No doubt. Gray said. I'm really disappointed. Natsu sighed. You dare mock me, Lullaby shouted walking towards them. We mock anyone using the word mock. Naruto insulted. I'll kill you. Lullaby roared turning to Naruto. Yeah right. Naruto jumped and struck his fist into Lullaby's chest before he leaped up and grabbed his head before showing incredible strength and flinged him away from the others. King Cosmic Dragon's Galaxy Shower. Naruto put his hands together and fired a shower of rainbow energy blasts that pelted Lullaby's body, making more dents and holes in his body. Sky Dragon's Tornado. Naruto raised his hands up above him and threw them down, firing a sky-blue tornado shredding apart Lullaby's body, making his arms hang by a Groot. And here's another little something. Naruto reared his head back as a yellow magic seal appeared in front of him. Lightning Dragon's roar. He then fired a beam of lightning energy from his mouth as it hit and shocked Lullaby's body to his very demonic core. Raya. Lullaby screamed in pain and agony as he fell to his knee with steam coming off his body. CC curse you. It's time I ended this. Naruto said dispersing the rainbow flame around his body before he raised up his right hand and a rainbow orb appeared over it, giving off immense power from what everybody was feeling. Disintegrate into nothing. And purge the evil from your wicked soul. King Cosmic Dragon Stardust Breaker. Naruto then closed his hand encasing the orb before pulling his arm back and tossed it as it zoomed towards Lullaby. When it hit in the center of his chest rainbow energy started to crack around his body as his body started to disintegrate. And no this can't be happening to me. Lullaby yelled engulfing him in a rainbow blast that left nothing of him left showing a large crater in the forest. Alright. Nai-san owned him. Natsu shouted grinning, raising his fist up. Yeah he did. Happy laughed. Awesome Naruto. Lucy shouted smiling. Well done my boy. Makarov smiled proudly. That was amazing. Bob grinned. He made defeating Zeref's demon look so easy. Goldmine smirked. I can't believe how incredibly strong this guy is. Kajayama said amazing as Naruto turned around to everybody and smirked winking at them giving everyone a thumbs up. 
Are all fairy tale wizards strong like him? How about that? Was that a show for you guys? Naruto chuckled. Good work, Naruto. Gray smirked, crossing his arms. You definitely are one of the strongest in fairy tale. Urza smiled. He's pretty awesome, don't you think? Makarov laughed. Yes, he is. The other guildmaster agreed. Looks like we owe a big one to fairy tale and their Oberon. Goldmine chuckled. At least he didn't destroy the conference hall. But how fairy tale destroys things, I'm surprised. Maybe he's one of the rare restraint one. Naruto smiled, seeing everyone talk and laugh about. Naruto kun. He looked to see Urza walk up to him, smiling softly. Great work. Thanks, Urza chan. Naruto smiled softly back. A few hours later, after getting more thanks from the guild masters and Kajayama being taken into custody, the group began to walk their way home. That was quite a battle, Nai san. Natsu chuckled with his hands behind his head. And it didn't even look like you were trying. Gray grinned. Well, Lullaby wasn't really all that tough. Naruto laughed, scratching his cheek. Yeah, no doubt. You look like you barely broke a sweat. Lucy giggled. You'll soon find out it takes a lot more for Naruto to get serious. Urza stated smiling. That's cause Naruto is the toughest guy there is. Happy smiled waving his arms around. I have to say you have improved my dear boy. I have no doubt that you have gotten even stronger since you left. Makarov smiled turning to Naruto. Yeah well I couldn't have been slacking off while I was away. Naruto smiled before raising his fist up. I even think I'm strong enough to defeat Gilderts in a fight. Oh? What makes you think that? Makarov asked intrigued. Well you know my training regime. I quadrupled it to a new level. Naruto smirked. You quadrupled your training system, are you serious Natsu, happy, and Gray shouted shocked beyond all belief, while Makarov and Urza's face turned white as sheets. He, yeah. Naruto laughed sheepishly rubbing the back of his head. Seriously what kind of training do you do? Lucy asked wondering what Naruto's true strength is. Naruto was already powerful back in the day. If he quadruple his training dear god I wouldn't even be able to think about how powerful he is now. Urza thought sweating a little. Naruto you just keep getting stronger. You might even be on the wizard saint's level. Makarov sweated a lot before a massive grin broke on his face. Ooh. I wonder what all the fame you and fairy tale would get. He possibilities are endless. Naruto chuckled seeing his guildmates' faces before looking up at the sky. One step at a time. With what Master Makarov said, maybe I can forget and forgive the past and look towards the future. Only time will tell. Naruto thought as he continued walking with everyone else back home. Took a while, but I managed to finish this chapter. Chapter 3 Settling back in, the group managed to make it back to Magnolia overnight and separated heading on home. One of the groups were Naruto and Urza walking towards their home at Fairy Hills. I must say Naruto that was quite the fight against Lullaby. Urza smiled. Yeah, well I think just that demon of Zeref was truly weak. Naruto grinned. Why you say that? Urza asked. Come on Urza. It was a demon basically made of wood. Naruto deadpanned. I bet even Natsu could cook that demon. You have a point. Urza nodded in agreement. When they made it to Fairy Hills they saw the lobby was empty, so they made their way upstairs. Hey, um Naruto Urza murmured. What is it, Urza? Naruto asked. Could I spend the night with you? Urza asked. Naruto's blinked in surprise before he gave her a soft smile. Sure. Naruto nodded making Urza smile. They reached Naruto's room and went inside Naruto going into the kitchen and Urza sitting down on the couch. What are you doing? Urza asked from the living room. I'm getting you a special treat. To make up for leaving you all those years ago. Naruto said from the kitchen. I wonder what it is. Urza thought. Urza saw Naruto come from the kitchen carrying a slice of strawberry cheesecake on a plate with a fork, but it had gold cream on it, the strawberries were dark red, and the cake seemed to sparkle. Is that? Urza asked in a squeaky voice. Yep. My special Naruto strawberry cheesecake. I had some made before I came back. Naruto grinned. Gim 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 gim. Urza said like a child. Okay, okay. Naruto laughed giving Urza the cheesecake. Urza was giddy and used the fork to break off a piece of the cheesecake before she took a bite. The small redeed girl was laying on the ground as she was surrounded by large black werewolves. They zeroed in on her as they moved in to finally take her life. This was her fault. If only she had listened to the village elders. Soon she would be dead maybe she'd finally see her parents. A roar of agony was heard. The girl looked up to see a man standing with a fist through the skull of one of the werewolves. He turned and dropped his heel on another with an axe kick, killing it as the massacre began. The man tore the werewolves to shreds, anything that tried to harm the girl, never got within 20 feet of her, since he would be there to destroy them. That's all he did. Punch and kick, but his moves were elegant, as if he were dancing while he battled. Soon, only the man and the girl were left. He crouched down and offered her a hand. Come. He said. I'll take you somewhere you can be safe. She smiled as she saw his whiskered face and cerulean blue eyes melted her heart. 
Urza sniffed as tears streamed down her face. As such, good sea cake. She sobbed while continuing to eat the cake. Naruto chuckled seeing how Urza enjoyed his cooking. He continued watching Urza eat the strawberry cheesecake and cry in a blissful-like trance. When she was done Urza placed the empty plate down and dried her eyes. Still as good as you remember? Naruto asked. I think your cooking skills have gotten even better. I didn't think it was possible. Urza smiled at him. Well while I was away I was improving myself any way I could. Naruto grinned. Naruto was surprised when Urza kissed him passionately before he started kissing her back, Urza placed her hands on his cheeks, pulling his face harder to hers like she was trying to devour him, while Naruto placed his hands on her hips as he tried to devour her just as intensely. Their tongues swirled around the other as if trying to drown the other in pleasure, making the moment pass, as years of going without the other and pent-up love were coming out. Feeling the need for air Naruto and Urza separated and looked deep into each other's eyes. I love you, Urza-chan. Naruto said. I love you too, Naruto-kun. Urza said. They leaning their forehead together and smiled lovingly at one another. Feeling they they were tired Naruto and Urza went into the bedroom to get changed, one went into the closet and the other went into the bathroom. When they finished they meet back up in the bedroom to see Naruto was wearing a black long-sleeved shirt and silver sweepants, and Urza was wearing a blue tank top and black short shorts. They got into the bed and snuggled with one another. Hey Naruto. Yeah. Promise me, you'll never leave me again. Urza, please. Urza looked into Naruto's eyes pleadly. Promise me. I promise you, I'll never leave you again. Naruto promised. Urza smiled rolling over on his chest and quickly went to sleep. Naruto smiled at her before went to sleep as well. The next day, Lucy just finished writing a letter to her mother before she stretched in her chair, trying to get the feeling back in her body. You know I could go for a bite to eat right now. Lucy muttered. Nice place you got here Lucy. Lucy turned around to see Gray sitting in her chair in his underwear waving at her. Hey. Intruder. Lucy shouted before kicking Gray in the face with both feet knocking him out of the chair. And no stripping in my house. She said standing over him. Wait, you don't understand. Gray said standing up. I was already naked when I got here. What do you want? Lucy deadpanned. I came to get you since I knew you would forget. Gray sighed. Forget what? Lucy asked. The fight between Naruto and Natsu. Gray said. They're really going to fight, Lucy said shocked. Oh yeah. And I have a feeling it's going to be epic to watch. Gray grinned. That fairy tale, in the forest area that was near the guild in a clearing Naruto and Natsu were standing a few feet away from each other as their guildmates was away from them to watch the fight. This is gonna be good. It's been years since we've seen those two go at it. I can't wait for this. So how do you think the fight will go? Lisanna asked her twin. Well knowing how much my Natsu has trained, I think he'll get Nai sent to put in some effort. Luna said. I still can't believe Naruto's back. Luna and Lysanna turned their heads to see a tall arch muscular 18-year-old boy that was tan-skinned, having spiked up white hair with blue eyes that had no eyebrows, and a stitched scar running down the side of his right face, wearing a dark blue high-collared jacket with a red shirt under it, dark blue pants, and traditional Japanese Jetta sandals. This was Elfman Strauss, the second oldest of the Strauss family. Nai-san, when did you get back? Lysanna asked. Just now when I heard the news that Naruto was back. Elfman said before smiling at his sisters. But then I also got wind of there being a fight between him and Natsu. Yep. Old Natsu challenged Naruto to a fight before they got done with a mission. Kana smirked. And I'm taking all bets. Doesn't this seems a little extreme? I mean I know Natsu is no slouch, but from what I've seen Naruto is in a league of his own. Lucy said as she and Gray joined the group. True, but Ash for Brains wants to see how he fares against Naruto after not seeing him for years. Gray said. I just hope Naruto won't be too hard on Natsu. Marahin said. Knowing Natsu, he would feel insulted if Naruto held back. Urza grinned. Are you boys ready? Makarov asked standing between them. I was born ready, old man. Natsu smirked slamming his right fist in his left hand. Let's do this. Naruto grinned rolling his shoulders. Okay then, fight. Makarov said jumping back for the fight that was about to happen. Iron Dragon's iron fist. Natsu engulfed his fists in fire and charged forward. In Cosmic Dragon's iron fist. Naruto engulfed his fists in rainbow fire and leaped forward. Both brothers in all but blood slammed their fists together, creating a boom so strong it pushed their guildmates back a bit. Um. Gray said. You said it. Luna agreed. Naruto and Natsu slammed their other fists together making another boom before they jumped and charged at one another, where they got into a frenzy trying to punch the other, only for both of their punches to be blocked, parried, or moved out the way. When Naruto and Natsu slammed their left and right fists into each other, they began trying to fight for dominance to get the other, with enough force the iron fists went past the other and slammed into their intended target's face, launching them away from each other. 
Naruto spun around backwards and landed on his feet skidding back while Inatsu rolled on the ground and stopped by digging his hands and feet into the ground skidding back as well. They both looked at each other and grinned. Igniting their hands and feet in their respective fires, Naruto and Natsu ran at each other and collided again. Naruto kicked his right leg at Natsu's head, but he blocked it with his left arm, Natsu then retaliated by thrusting his fight fist, only for Naruto to block it with his left knee. Natsu then punched Naruto in the face with his left fist, and Naruto got him back by nailing his own left fist in Natsu's face. Natsu then squatted down and swift kicked Naruto under his legs making him fall down, but not for long, as when Naruto landed on his back, he breaked and stand pelted Natsu with kicked, knocking him to the ground. Naruto rolled backwards getting on his feet as Natsu got up as well. Now this is a fight, Nai-san. Natsu grinned. You've gotten better, Atato-chan. Naruto smirked. I've yet to get started. Fire Dragon's Claw. Natsu leaped at Naruto with his legs blazing more fire. Then I'll meet that. King Cosmic Dragon's Crushing Fang. Naruto charged with his hands raging in more rainbow fire. Natsu kicked his left leg at Naruto who meet the attack with his left hand in a position of a claw, Naruto then grabbed Natsu's leg and spun him around towards the ground, but Natsu was quick as he put his hands to the ground and back kicked Naruto with his right leg, only for Naruto to block it with his right hand claw. Natsu then pulled his left leg back and kicked Naruto in the chest, making him go flip up backwards in the air over the forest, he then righted himself as Natsu turned around and blazed his arms in fire. Fire Dragon's Wing Attack. Natsu spread his arms wide and fired flames. Ink Cosmic Dragon's Blade Barrage. Naruto swiped his arms apart, firing his barrage of rainbow energy slashes. The attacks meet cancelling each other out creating a smokescreen. Ink Cosmic Dragon's Talon. Naruto began to fall down with his left leg in rainbow fire. Fire Dragon's Crushing Fang. Natsu jumped with his right hand claw in fire. Both of their attacks reached head on creating a boom, as sparks of fire came from their attacks trying to fight over the other. With one final push Naruto and Natsu separated and landed on the ground skidding back leaving trenches. Man, look at this fight. Happy cheered. I'm surprised Natsu is holding his own against Naruto. Lucy said. My Natsu trains hard to where he could be Naruto's equal. Luna smiled. Yeah, but he has a long way to go. Grey grinned crossing his arms. Even I can tell Naruto is still holding back, but Natsu is making him put up a good fight. Urza smiled. Yeah. This is so manly. Elfman laughed. Oh brother. Lysanna sighed shaking her head. You've gotten stronger. I'm impressed with how far you've come. Naruto chuckled. Hey, wanting to be as strong as you is a great motivator. Natsu grinned. I'm glad I can inspire you to do better. Naruto said. And I created a new move thanks to you. Natsu said tensing his body up. New move? Naruto asked. Fire Dragon's Inferno Ken. Natsu roared as his body bursted with crimson flames outlining his body. What the? Naruto muttered. Whoa. Natsu's flames are a different color. Kana shouted. That looks like Naruto's Kaioken. Lucy said. Flamabrain must have based that move from him. Gray said. You surprise me with that, Natsu. Naruto grinned. Thanks. Now let me show you how I use it. Natsu grinned. Natsu disappeared in a flicker of crimson flames before suddenly appearing in front of Naruto and slammed his right fist into his gut, making him bend over at the sudden pain where he was then kicked in the face by Natsu's leg, making Naruto soar into trees as they fell on him. Everyone was shocked by the devastating blows Natsu was able to do to Naruto. D that was unreal. Elfman stuttered. I had no idea Natsu could bring Naruto down like that. Marahin breathed. This just proves how hard Natsu has trained to be an equal to Naruto. Urza said before smirking. But this will only be more fun for Naruto. Being Cosmic Dragon's Kaioken. Rainbow flames bursted from the trees blowing them away, showing Naruto standing up with said flames outlining his body as blood dripped from the left side of his mouth. Did I shock you, Nai-san? Natsu grinned cheekily. Not bad, Ataru-chan. You saw my technique once and made your own. Now let's see how it handles against me. Naruto smirked. Both dragon slayers disappeared in a flicker of their flames before booms went off all over the area too fast for the guild members to see. They were only able to see them appear and disappear in different areas around the field, each one showing them punching or kicking the other, or others where one of them nailed the other. Naruto and Natsu then appeared in the middle of the area slamming their right and left elbows into each other, trying to overpower the other. They then reared their left and right fists back and slammed them into each other, knocking them back skidding to the ground. Natsu then jumped at Naruto and punched him with his left fist, only for Naruto to grab it with his right hand, Naruto then punched Natsu with his own left fist, but Natsu grabbed it as well. Locked in a power struggle Naruto and Natsu then raised their knees to nail each other, only to meet in a deadlock, they did it again with their other knee, only to get the same result only a trench hole to appear under them. 
They kept slamming each knee into each other, making the hole go deeper and deeper into the ground, Naruto and Natsu did it one more time before jumping up backwards out the hole. Bing Cosmic Dragon's Roar. Naruto fired a large rainbow beam from his mouth. Fire Dragon's Roar. Natsu fired a large stream of flames from his mouth. Both roar attacks collided trying to push the other back before they went off in an explosion cancelling each other out. Hey I just realized, why is Naruto only using his cosmic element? I'm sure he could have used other elements to fight Natsu with. Lucy wondered. It's cause Naruto only uses his cosmic element when fighting or training Natsu. He feels using any other element would be unfair him. Urza said. Not to mention it was funny seeing Ashtray get beat the other elements. Gray snickered. If I recall you didn't do so hot against him either, Snow Cone. Luna pointed out and smirked when Gray dropped his head at that fact. I think it's time we finish this. Natsu grinned powering his flames more. I couldn't agree more. Naruto smirked powering his flames as well. Natsu then jumped up high in the air, focusing his crimson fire in his hands. But the flame in my right hand and the flame in my left, put them together, and this is what you get. Natsu put his hands together and raised them up above his head, forming a gigantic crimson fireball. Fire dragon's brilliant flame. Disintegrate into nothing. And purge the evil from your wicked soul. Naruto raised up his right hand and a rainbow orb appeared over it giving off immense of power. King Cosmic Dragon Stardust Breaker. Rearing his hands back Natsu then threw his hands forward and launched a giant fireball, as closing his hand around the orb, encasing it Naruto pulled his arm back and tossed it forward. Both attacks collided creating a massive explosion and a bright light, blinding everyone as they could barely see, they also didn't see two figures charged into the explosion and bright light as they in the middle, and gave off a sonic boom, knocking everyone but Makarov, Urza, and Marahin to the ground. When the light dimmed down everyone could see again and saw smoke covering the whole field, so they couldn't see inside of it. The wind picked up blowing the smoke away, showing Naruto and Natsu standing at the ends of the field with their backs to one another, with scuffles and bruises all over their bodies, as their flames weren't on their bodies anymore. No one said anything as all was quiet. I'm proud of the wizard you're turning into, Natsu. If you keep up that drive you'll go far, I know it. Naruto smiled. Thanks Naruto. That means a lot coming from you. Natsu smiled. Natsu suddenly fell down sideways on the ground and passed out with a smile still on his face. Winner. Naruto. Makarov shouted waving his left hand at Naruto. The guildmates cheered at the amazing fight they witnessed as Naruto went to Natsu, while Urza, Marahin, Grey, Lucy, Lasana, Luna, Happy, Elfman, and Kana were right behind him. Is he okay? Luna asked concerned for her boyfriend. He's fine. Just tired from using all his energy. Naruto chuckled kneeling down to his little brother figure. He's come a long way from being the little kid I grew up with. What did you expect? When it comes to Natsu, he's a battle maniac. Lysanna giggled. I kinda feel sorry for you Luna. Having to deal with all that. Gray snickered. Hey his fierceness in battle transfers to that in the bedroom. Luna huffed crossing his arms. Wait. So you too Lucy squeaked blushing. Oh we have. And trust me he is a dragon in the sack. Luna giggled licking her lips. So Natsu lost his v-card huh? Well I'll be damned. Naruto chuckled. Did you know about this? Urza asked Marahin. Yep. I know everything when it comes to my siblings. Marahin giggled. I'll have to teach Natsu a lesson about betting my sister. Elfman growled cracking his knuckles. Nai San you touch my man, and I will personally neuter you. Luna threatened making Elfman skeek in fear holding his privates. I can't believe the fire clown lost his virginity before me. Gray frowned. Hey, I bet Natsu beat Naruto to the punch as well. Happy smiled. Sorry to disappoint you Happy, but I lost mine when I was 16. Naruto smirked. Bang. We waited till Natsu turned 17. Luna said. Well Naruto does have a higher sex appeal than Natsu. Kana grinned. Wait you lost your virginity so someone else I was supposed to have it. Urza pouted. Sorry, Urza-chan. But it happened when this girl was comforting me after what happened causing me to leave fairy tale. Naruto said picking Natsu up and walked towards the guild missing the wince Marahin's body gave out but it wasn't by the rest of the group. Hold it right there. Everyone turned to see a walking frog in clothes along with the army come up to everyone. By the order of the council Naruto Uzumaki and Urza Scarlet are under arrest. The frog said. What? Lucy shouted. On what charge? Grey yelled. This is unmanly. Elfman roared. The other guildmates started to voice out their displeasure as well. That's enough everyone. Makarov said making everyone go quiet. But Master Lasana and Luna tried to say. Everything will work out. Makarov assured before turning to Naruto and Urza. I expect to hear about this when it's over. Hi. Naruto and Urza nodded. Naruto handed Natsu to Elfman as he and Urza were escorted by the frog and the army. At the council headquarters, Naruto and Urza were walking through the halls being escorted by the frog towards the council room. You thinking the same thing? 
Urza asked. Yeah. The council is just a bunch of pussies that don't want to own up to their own mistakes. Naruto snorted. You watch what you say about the castle, young man. The frog frowned at him. You better fuck off before I make frog legs out of you. Naruto threatened with an evil look in his eye making the frog shiver in fright. So your fairy tales Oberon that went missing but has come back. Naruto and Urza looked up to see a 19-year-old girl that has pale skin and slim figure having long dark purple that reached her back and bangs over her ears, coming to her chest with red eyes wearing a white kimono that reached her thighs, her right sleeve was short coming to her shoulder, a yellow obi wrapped around her waist snugly making her e-cup breasts more pronounced, and black sandals leaning against a wall with her arms crossed. I have to say, I like what I see. And you are? Naruto asked. Council member, Altier Milkovich. Pleased to meet you. Altier smiled walking towards Naruto and Urza. Likewise. Naruto nodded. So you've heard about me? From one of our council members who is very fond of fairy tale. He often spoke about you and the amazing power you wield. Says you're a force to be reckoned with. Altier grinned. Well, I don't like to brag or anything. Naruto chuckled sheepishly rubbing the back of his head with his right hand. You're still modest after all these years. Urza teased. Bite me. Naruto frowned. It just made the girls giggle. Well if it isn't Urza and her long lost King Naruto. Everyone turned to the voice to see a 19 year old boy that had slight tan skin having blue hair that went to the back of his neck with dark green eyes that had a tattoo above and under his right eye, wearing a long white frock coat with black stripes across the edges and on the upper part of the arms, a decorated standing collar, large straps connected to decorated buckles closing the inducement on the front over a dark shirt and matching pants and shoes walking towards them. See grain. Naruto and Urza said glaring at him. My, is that any way to greet someone? After all I'm the one who always vouches for you guys. Seagrain smirked. So this entire thing is just a ruse. Urza frowned. We just don't want to be blamed for the lullaby incident. Seagrain said. Maybe if you fuckers were doing your job right people wouldn't think so low of you. Naruto growled. Ah Naruto. Still as ferocious when mad I see. I can sense the years have made you stronger. Seagrain grinned stopping in front of Naruto. Be pushing me and you'll see how ferocious I can be. Naruto seethed. I bet. Seagrain then looked at Urza. I see you're still as lovely as ever Urza. No doubt you're more radiant since Naruto here is back. Watch it, Seagrain. Naruto said demonically making everyone shudder. Well, why don't we get this show on the road? Seagrain grinned walking away trying to get over the feeling of death just now. Sure. Altier smiled before looking at Naruto and winked at him following Seagrain. Naruto who calmed down smiled at Altier's retreating figure. HMPH. Urza pouted pulling on Naruto's left cheek. Ow. What? Naruto said as his cheek was pulled. Let's go. Urza said walking towards room pulling Naruto along. She still gets jealous easily. Naruto thought amusingly. Once they made it into the room they saw the council members in all their glory. On the left there was Hog, Yuri, Liji, Belno, and Ultier on the right there was Seagrain, Yujima, Michello, Org, and Crawford Seam, and in the middle was Grand Doma, the leader of the Magic Council. I'm not describing the council cause I don't want to. Urza, Titania. And the long lost Naruto, Oberon. You have been brought before the council. Grand Doma. You mean we've been brought to this shitshow for your mistake on someone who noticed it before you? Naruto scoffed. I'd watch your tone if I were you Yuzumaki. You stand before the council. Belno frowned. First of all, I don't have to do shit. Second of all, all you fuckers know how to do if blame fairy tale for how we do things and get results. Well you sit on your butts and complain. Naruto retorted. Now see here you miscreant. Michello shouted. We will not be talked to that way. Ord yelled. You seem to forget who put you all in your places years ago. Naruto frowned before grinning darkly. Allow me to remind you. The room was flooded with killer intent, making it hard for anyone to breath. The only ones who were not affected were Urza, Yajima, and Altier that's cause Naruto didn't want them to be affected. Now since we're all in agreement that this whole thing is a farce to cover up your asses. Me and Urza will kindly leave here, oh and if this happens again you can bet you'll feel a dragon's wrath. Naruto promised before turning around and walked out. Have a pleasant day magic council. Urza bowed before leaving the room. I see he hasn't changed after all these years. Grand Doma sighed. Yes, young Naruto still has some bite to him. Yajim laughed. Well of course. He is one of Fairy Tail's strongest wizards. Seagrain smirked. And I hope to find out more about him. Altier smiled licking her lips. Back at the Fairy Tail Guild, I'm getting a little worried. Lucy frowned sitting at a table with Lysana and Luna. Me too. They've been gone for a while now. Kana said drinking from her mug sitting at a table with Elfman and Grey. I bet the council just wants to accuse them of wrongdoings. Grey huffed crossing his arms. Well they are always breathing down our necks. Lysana said. Doesn't give those assholes to suddenly take our guildmates to the slammer. 
Luna snorted. You guys worry too much. Natsu grinned leaning back against the bar with his arms on it, with Happy sitting in a chair next to him. He was wrapped up in bandages around his body, right arm, left cheek, and around his head. Natsu how can you say that? Elfman frowned. Yeah and Natsu. I figured you would be the first person to go after Naruto and Urza if they were taken by the Magic Council. Happy said. Normally I would. But you forget Naruto is with them and he won't take shit from the council. It's been that way since forever. Natsu chuckled. Alright you are my boy. With Naruto there everything will be alright. Makarov laughed. Speaking of alright, you sure you're gonna be okay, Natsu? Marahin asked him. Sure. After all that was the longest fight I was able to last with Nai Sen yet. I still have a long way to go to be his equal. Natsu said rubbing his nose. Ha. I doubt you'll ever be Naruto's equal ashtray. Gray mocked. If I seem to remember you aren't any better with fighting him Frosty. Hell Yukiana said you have to beat her to challenge Nai Sen anymore, and you still couldn't. Natsu smirked snapping his fingers. Oh. You want some ice for that burn Luna laughed. You just got told. Kana snickered. That had to sting. Marahin giggled. I'll have you know I bet I'm a match for Yukiana. Gray shouted. Is that right? Everyone turned to the entrance of the guild to see an 18-year-old girl that had a slender figure and pale skin, having long black hair and bangs, framming her face to her collarbone, with dark brown eyes wearing a black and blue high-collared halter top, two pink intersecting belts over her D-cup breasts that had a metal fairy tale symbol on it in the middle, white bell sleeves on her arms with tan fingerless gloves, black shorts that had two strips of blue cloth that drape over either side of her hips, along with a smaller white strip of cloth tied around her waist, draped in the same manner, black stockings on her legs which reached to about halfway up her thighs, leaving a small area of bare skin on her upper thighs, and pointed armored silver boots with a sharp hook on the outer side of each ankle, walking in the guild smiling. Think Aqua's clothes from Kingdom Hearts. She had the fairy tale symbol and ice blue on her left shoulder. You think you're a match for me, Grey? Haku? Lisanna and Luna shouted smiling as they got up and ran to the girl hugging her. It's great to see you guys too. Haku laughed hugging them back. Who's she? Lucy asked. That Lucy is Haku Mamachi, fairy tales Yukiana. Kana smiled. Why is she called that? Lucy asked again. Cause oh, she's our ice dragon slayer. Elfman grinned. Wow. Based on what you said means she uses ice attacks. Lucy theorized. Bingo. Happy said. So you came back too? Natsu asked. Yeah I had to take care of a little thing before coming back since I know Naruto arrived before me. Haku said pulling away from Lisanna and Luna. But what's this about Grey thinking he's a match for me? She teased. I know I'm a match for you. Gray said confidently. We'll see about having a match then to verify. Haku giggled. So I see you made it back, Haku. Haku turned around to see Naruto and Urza walking in the guild, both having grins on their faces. Hey, Naruto-kun. Haku smiled going to him and kissing his cheek. Hey, he's mine. Urza growled playfully wrapping her arms around Naruto's left arm. You agreed to share. So tough. Haku teased making Urza stick her tongue out at him making Naruto chuckle. Share. Lucy said confused. You'll learn in time Lucy. Kana said as she laughed along with Lisanna, Grey, Luna, Happy, and Elfman. You alright, Ataudo? Naruto asked Natsu. I'm cool Nai-san. That was a fun fight. Natsu grinned. You and Natsu fought. Haku asked. Yep. He's far from the kid he was back then. He's made a lot of progress. Naruto smiled at Haku. I was able to record the whole thing in here. Kana said tossing a lacrima to Haku. I'll be sure to look at it. Haku nodded her head and put the lacrima away. So how did it go with the council my boy? Makarov asked. Oh they tried cover their own asses by trying to put the blame on me and Urza. So I reminded them just who they're dealing with. Naruto smirked. That's good. Makarov laughed. Anyway I'm gonna head on home. I'll see you guys later. Naruto said heading out the guild. Hang on I'll come with you. Urza said following Naruto. Nice to know that Nai-san can still put the castle in its place. Natsu snickered. I. Happy agreed. True. Especially since they've been breathing down our necks a lot lately. Elfman added in. Even that some of the stuff we do I'm not surprised. Kana pointed out. But still there are other guilds to annoy. Gray said. Well I'm just glad no one got put in the slammer. Lucy said. True that. Lisanna and Luna nodded. So anyway, was the fight between Naruto and Natsu really that good? Haku asked. All I have to say is that you'll be surprised. Marahin said. Hmm. Haku said looking at the lacrima. But Naruto and Urza. Naruto was coming out the shower with a towel wrapped around his waist cause he smelled ripe after the battle with Natsu and wanted to get rid of the stink. Still can't believe Natsu copied my move and made it his own. Naruto said shaking the water out his hair coming into the bedroom. It shows how determined he is to catch up to you. 
Urza said sitting on his bed reading a book wearing the clothes she wore last night. Can't argue with that. It's like he's a battle genius or something. Naruto chuckled. Don't let him hear that. He might get a swelled head. Urza giggled. What would be the difference? Naruto said looking at Urza. True. Anyway you Urza trailed off as she looked at Naruto's body and felt her mouth dry. He was perfectly cut, toned, and defined with a lean build. His biceps and triceps were all defined and visible, and he sported an eight-pack as well. His lower half was just as perfect, with his calves being powerful along with his thighs and legs in general. It also didn't help that his defined body was dripping wet. Urza never felt more jealous of water seeing it go down Naruto's neck to his chest, then abs and disappear into the towel. Urza nearly felt a nose wanting to burst out of her nose. Urza? Naruto said walking to her and waved his hand in front of her face. Hello, Ikmurza purred setting her book and trailed her fingers from Naruto's abs to his neck. I still need you to cash in that thing you owe me. You mean where we would have sex after my last mission? Naruto said huskily. Yeah, but you left before we could. Well then, time to rectify that. That was a pretty good fucking you gave me, Naruto-kun. Urza said with a smile. Yeah, it sure was. You did very well for your first time, Urza-chan. Naruto stated with a smile rubbing her stomach. Thanks, Naruto-kun. Urza replied. Anytime my ruby-haired rose. Naruto said lovingly. I've really missed hearing you call me that. Yeah, you did love that nickname. Almost as much as I love you. Naruto and Urza kissed each other passionately before they got themselves situated and pulled the covers over them to get some sleep, putting them in a spooning position still connected to one another. Night, Urza. Naruto smiled. Night, Naruto. Urza smiled. Naruto and Urza closed their eyes to let sleep take them. I just realized something. Urza said suddenly. What's that? Naruto asked. Now that you're back you'll be attracting girls like a magnet. Soon you'll have your hands full. Urza teased. Oh really? Naruto grinned. Feeling her danger senses go off Urza looked behind her to see Naruto having an evil look in his eyes, making her nervous. Before she knew it Naruto started tickling Urza making her laugh uncontrollably. Naruto. Ha ha ha. Stop. Never. Feel my tickle wrath. Naruto continued to tickle Urza as they both laughed before they settled down and began to drift asleep. What if Naruto is returns to fairy tale and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.